it showed that someone was intelligent. Like being sad was like trendy. Yeah. Uh, sad is in. I'm so sad. It's like, did it ruin your life? Then you're not. I'm just kidding. I'm gatekeeping depression. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome to 500 Open Tabs. I'm Kava Taharian. And I'm Hannah Hillam. And today we have a very special guest. He is a video game talk show host and writer for the pop culture website Temple of Geek. Everybody, please welcome to the podcast, Mr. Croce Josavi. Well, that adds some oomph <laughs> where, to it. That was like from your music? soul. <laughs> uh, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I'm happy to be here. I've, I've been a fan of you guys for a minute now and seen you guys come and stuff. But um, yeah, no, I was super stoked. Uh, so are we. I, I've always been on the other end of it and I'm like, this is I'm I'm here now. I'm amongst you. I've are you, outside I've, the TV. I've tricked you guys. <laughs> Look, we're all tricking everybody to get anywhere. It's true. Like, <laughs> it's all a lie. Everyone's lying. <laughs> it's a pyramid 100%. scheme. It okay, is. now you go and trick two more people and oh, you know, I will. keep it going. <laughs> and then my it's downline will be extra tricked. And then I'll yeah, exactly. get more tricked. I'll be able to trick more. So is this uh, the first podcast just, this is, this, you've been on? This is the first one, uh I mean with you guys. I've been on oh, a few yeah. other okay. uh uh uh, friends shows uh they do there's one my friend does underrated podcasts talking about a bunch of films that he believes is underrated for various oh, reasons hey and i hold a record on his show i'll say this this is an accolade i hold strongly he's had s- like five different mini series covering different like underrated films in sports underrated films in historical spaces and underrated in games and I like hold the champion for being on each one of them on hey, each one nice. of these little mini series. It's like so the like... egot of podcasting. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> for this one show, <laughs> just one yeah. singular show, one network. I'm on everything. Yeah, you might recognize me from such things as <laughs> the egot of podcasting. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, I met Kurush for the first time last year in 2023 at San Diego Comic Con. Uh, if you guys haven't watched the episode of Kurush's show that I went on, we played, or actually Kurush played Prince Persia, and then we talked about it in Farsi. Uh, so cool. And then you cut together a uh, lovely little reel that I still die laughing at, where it looks like we fell in love at San Diego. I was going to say, every time I look at that reel, it looks like a love story. It's like, oh my God, we first met here. I showed up to your panel, and like... It was just Persian love at first sight. <laughs> Absolutely, it was. Uh, you are you are from the uh, your home state's Oklahoma, I believe. Is that right? This is accurate. Hey, yes. this is the yeah. second Oklahoman we've had on this podcast. What second? Yeah. Wow, there's more of us. I didn't there's know. One more. So, I, and I didn't know. We Alex. Skipped... <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. We're repping Oklahoma here on the podcast, hardcore. That's also, by the way, where Sarah was born, which is why oh, uh, we had yeah. fun conversation with Kurosh when we first met him. So, anyway, did you guys uh, meet at the booth, or did he? Did you? Where did you meet at Comic Con? So, when I was going, that was that was that year that I met uh, Kava was the first year I had a panel at Comic Con. And I was like going oh. and trying to like go in from the the standpoint of like I'm part of this now. I'm, yeah, you know, I got to wear my big boy pants and everything. Yeah. And one of the folks that I work with uh, from the welcome party, Alex Gal, she goes by Alex Galaxy Online. Um, she was like, "Hey, you should check out this panel. I think it it's something that like based on what you've shared with me and and stuff, I think you'd really vibe with it." And I'm like, "Oh my god, I never would. I it didn't even cross my mind. I I'd never heard of what the the, the acronym Mina prior to that." Per, oh really? Per, from my my perspective, so I was like, "This is a it's thing relatively cool. new, yeah." It's in terms of like being in the mainstream and stuff. It used to it's... just be straight Middle Eastern, but Mina oh. makes more sense. For those so, who don't know, it's Middle Eastern, North African. North African, right? Yeah. Sorry. So then I, I attended the panel, and I was like, "Oh, okay," and and it was a great panel. I know of like everyone spoke from their own experiences and stuff. And then uh, when Kyle was sharing a lot of his thoughts, I was like, "I think I vibe here. Like I resonate <laughs> with a lot of." the just the angle you were coming up from some of the the things you spoke about like podcasting and just more direct experiences i'm like i can at least latch on to some of those thoughts and so i spoke with a few folks after and i spent the most time talking to, to you and your your lovely wife as well about like the oklahoma roots we grew up yeah. in. yeah and, and cool. from there i you know i got a chance to to be more connected to you guys now Listen, the moral of the story here is is always go to panels that i'm uh-huh. on because you might end up as a guest on the podcast <laughs> on this popular and Tens lauded of podcast. people listen to there are yeah twelves internationally Twelves. renowned domestically uh, acclaimed Panned. reviled oh yeah acclaimed yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Pan infamous. Oh, infamous, there we go. some may say. Almost uh, so correct. Famous. Almost accurate, <laughs> I would say. Yeah. Almost yeah. correct. Anyway, you are a lover of video games and a lover of podcasts, and we're excited to have you. But, of course, the first uh -huh. question we always ask our, ask our guests is, are you an open tab haver or are you not an open tab haver? And how I, many do you have open if you do? So, and okay, I need to say something first. Do they know the platform <gasps> we use for, for this for recording like can i talk for about riverside it? yeah riverside? So riverside okay we can yeah. talk about it yeah but yeah. So, i don't know if we've talked about it on the show necessarily well, it's, it's directly it related secret. bad ways oh okay okay my apologies <laughs> but it, the reason Thanks i bring riverside. it up is is directly because of their question of how many tabs i own so i'm going through and i had this pr precursor email of like hey you should watch this to get geared up to use riverside and i'm going through it i think i got everything set up and it's like hey uh, to make sure it's running, make sure you're on Chrome, and make sure you close everything. Make sure you close all other tabs. <laughs> and I don't I, listen to that. And I, I was worried. I was like, I don't want to mess this up. I don't want that to be the reason I messed this up. So I spent 20 minutes now closing <laughs> no! everything. And, and so to answer your question, usually I have like browsers upon browsers upon browsers oh. of like 15, 20 tabs here, One 15, of us. 20 tabs here, and I close them all to be on the show. Rule follower. Oh, my you, God. You closed the... I've never listened to that rule ever. I have 12 tabs open right now with Riverside. You know, when, when I, I now feel like I've... <laughs> I'm in... I, I went under into here under the perception I was going into the big leagues, and I was like, I don't want to screw this up. Aww. And so I'm like... Jokes I'm like, on you. <laughs> just, We're not just, even a league. <laughs> <laughs> We're like a uh, like an intramural uh, um, yeah. like college. We're a podcast. loose affiliation. Is yeah. really they're like first time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Come aboard. <laughs> that is flattering because you know what we started this show. Part of our thing was like we're going to help people close their tabs and help ourselves close our tabs, and it didn't work nope. at all. But no. I think you just made up for the last nine months of us opening even more tabs. So That's I true. think the best way you get people to close their tabs is to have them come use on the show and, and follow. Yeah, use Riverside and follow Everyone. the guy. <laughs> like, got yeah, another one, guests. sucker. <laughs> I love that story. So well, it but, sounds like you that. have multiple windows with multiple tabs, not necessarily yes. one with a tab. Yeah, I usually on my computer, it's all segmented and I try to categorize them by okay. some madness. But on my phone, I can say this. I have 157 tabs open. Hey, nice. It's respectable. I like it. I like it. Hope How I many can do you have? Some... Oh, no. Kave never... His is always in the... I'm like... A, I, I think you can check. I'm like, I don't know, 375, something like that. Nice. I'm not quite 500. I've been cleaning up a lot lately. Yeah. Also because I, I have to periodically go back and look at old tabs to be like, what am I going to do next for the show? And then I'm yeah. like, oh, I just have 15 of the same page that I opened up, like trying to follow <laughs> some link from Instagram that I'm going to look at later. And then I forgot. Yeah. The amount of times I, I will be like, wait, I don't have a tab for this. And all of a sudden my phone's like, yes, you do. Yes. yes you do. Like, it opens the tab. It. It's yeah. like... <laughs> and sometimes like, it's the most random stuff where I'm like, I cannot believe I've Googled this before, but yeah, here anyway. we are. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, thank you for uh, coming on the show and agreeing to take one of those tabs and make a report out of it. And then, um, if there's anything else that we'd like to discuss, otherwise, I think we should go ahead and get into it. And Kurush, since you are the guest, you get to go first. Okay. So I normally feel like I have to stay very much on the game space, but I'm like this. I love the 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 freedom of this show that you guys yeah. have created. And so I'm like, I can Me talk too. about anything. Yeah, and you so can. I, I am very passionate about a particular hobby of mine. And it kind of like rampantly grew out of control since <laughs> I would say COVID. It, within reason, but I'll explain. So this this tab is about Magic the Gathering. Oh, oh. <laughs> straight to Hannah's heart. Oh. <laughs> what do you play? What are your usual? What are your usual like uh, color combos that you play? So I, I sorry, think I'll right let now. you talk. <laughs> your turn. Just FYI, <laughs> woo. So I know. You, okay, I oh. have nothing. I have oh. no. I have no magic. Oh, okay. none. I so have let, fallen let, deeply into the arms of Magic the Gathering. This is, so you, you got one on each end of the spectrum for this tab. You should see my closet, okay? Filled Bad. with cards? Oh, yeah, if I, I have so if many I, cards. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's embarrassing. It, it is embarrassing. Go on. Subject. But yeah. let, me, let me explain. So Magic the Gathering is a card game. It's a collectible card game. Uh, it's you're building your own deck out of this fantasy world that they've created. Um, it was made initially in, I believe, 1993. Oh. Um, and I think it, it's either the world's first or one of the first trading card games that, yeah. that came to about. Like, 
that that was something that was lost on me because I grew up not with Magic, but I grew up with like Pokemon, things like same, that. Same. The, the card games there. And then I know like there's like a multitude of others that exist now. If you go to a wall, like any Target, it's just like a wall of, hey, this thing has a card game. Uh, <laughs> you know, some random TV show, you know, Love Love F- Fools has a card game. Yeah. I don't know. Did you ever just, play the Lord of the Rings card game? There's a Lord of the Rings card? Oh, why am I not surprised? I'm not surprised. Oh, don't. Okay. Oh. Don't play it. I was going to say, my, I, I'm a little bit older than you guys, so I remember when Magic became a thing. Oh, I uh, bet you do. Yeah, and I had... <laughs> do you guys remember Wizard Magazine? You probably don't. Yes. Yeah. You do remember Wizard. Okay. I have so, a stack of them in my yes, garage. Oh, no shit. Yes, you yeah. do. <laughs> so I'm, my okay, only by the experience way, with... Sorry, you go. go. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. like <laughs> having such a hard time keeping everything in. So please, no, 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 continue. If I go uh, like, I was gonna say, <laughs> just ignore me. I was just going to say that my only experience with Magic the Gathering was that at some issue of Wizard uh, Magazine came with like three cards or something like that were when they were first launching Magic. Oh. And it came with some cards that were of some note and some kid in my sixth grade class was like, oh, those are awesome. And I sold it to him for like seven dollars or oh. something. Wow. And I was like, yeah, and I like <laughs> basically walked away being like, oh, I just made out because that chump paid money for a piece of plastic. <laughs> for That's a piece it. of paper, yeah. So I made money off of Magic the Gathering at 11 years old. So it'll that's the only place. Young entrepreneur. Good job. Exactly. <laughs> I respect that. <laughs> Sorry, continue though. But okay, so it is, I believe it's Wizards of the Coast. Like you said, Wizards is the the, the owner of the company. But now I believe Hasbro owns Wizards. Yeah. I think that's the way the hierarchy goes. Which is why they're um, combining all the sets with like TV, like different movies and stuff. Which oh yeah, I... it's become like equivalent. If you're familiar with how like Fortnite has become this whole multi like hey we have marvel in here we have terminators in here. yeah magic has done that in the card game space yeah of like just becoming this like commercial... a ready player one type thing where like exactly all the, yeah all the like, ips it's are just like into one thing gotcha. you could all have them all here and you could play with them and we could take your money and we could yeah you know you want the yeah or you um, make Gandalf then, that's called murder Frodo. <laughs> oh yeah, that's called a monopoly. And if you want yeah. Gandalf to murder Frodo in the Lord of the Rings magic crossover, you can do that. Yeah, you can. I've done that. I've done that. Yeah. Actually. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. But okay. So so that's the. It's owned by Wizards of the Coast, and um, the the game is essentially it's it's t- there's there's a multitude of actually formats I should say. It's like this is going to go in a lot of different directions. Okay. Um, it's a it's a player versus player experience. So you're like you're always playing against someone else or potentially multiple other people depending on the format, okay. and each of the formats has a distinct difference. It's like, hey, we come out with a set of, we'll say this is a this all of these cards that we're about to release are from this collection or set. So it's uh-huh. like the fall catalog of 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 <laughs> exactly. magic or the 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 spring <laughs> the spring season you spring know spring collection yeah the spring collection you know that that kind of thing and then they'll say like okay in this format you can only use the last four sets in this format we do everything from the past but only below a certain hierarchy they just made a bunch it's of it's how different, they make like, money yeah already associated yeah. as you were explaining that <laughs> I'm I'm with but, it don't worry but those those uh majority of the of the uh formats are typically one one versus one you're it's you were okay. across from another player playing a game one v one there is one particular format and this is the one that i have drawn the most ire towards and i think appealed to me the most because it was at a time when you know like i said i, I got into it during the midst of covid and quarantine and we were play we were wanting to play something that like kept us going through quarantine like okay. virtually and we'd heard that it's possible to play this game nowadays with a new format that offered not 1v1, but three to four players. And that uh-huh. format was called, it's formally called EDH, but oh. most people know it as Commander. Yeah. That's like the, the, the slang term for it on the streets. EDH? Uh, what does that even e- mean? Mean streets. The yeah, mean EDH. streets of magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're gathering. Uh, we're gonna gather these streets um we, we are by the end of this by the end of this tab we are um so edh stands for elder dragon highlander oh no and what is that a mormon <laughs> person who went on a mission it, it Hi, might i'm be. elder highlander <laughs> i'm so, a dragon highlander and i'm yeah, here yeah. to teach you about the, our lord and savior, our lord jesus, and christ. savior jesus christ wizard wi- <laughs> our wizard our wizards of the coast yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. I never understood where that term. I was introduced to it as like, hey, do you like you would like Commander? Commander, the, the local yeah. Comic shop was like, hey, just you know, Commander is the format you'd be into if you like these things, but you're like 
pro because we always wanted to play a game where it was not one of us always sitting on the side kind of like yeah. hey, okay i'll wait next turn we were like we want to play whatever we can do where we could all play together kind of cooperative oh yeah unlike the all the other formats are usually competitive or there's like a, a game plan that you have to mm-hmm. exact on you have to say this is the the most optimal things i have to do commander says that's all secondary it's all yeah. about being like it's to me and what <laughs> i think what drew a lot of people to it is it's a casual format it's a four player up to four player format and then it's a very style driven format i think what led to the addiction was now i can express myself in all these different ways i'm like oh this deck is going to speak to my love of like transformers so it's going to be a bunch of vehicles this deck is about uh lord of the rings so it's all my favorite lord of the rings cards yeah. this deck is about making everyone be nice to each other and even if they don't <laughs> want to and i'm like <laughs> that's so annoying yeah it's they hated it every time i play them they're like i want to ah! hit you i'm like you don't get to hit me i'm gonna give you more life you're gonna win you're gonna win you're winning at this <laughs> that's that so tarot style that would, no. that would so, deeply so anger me <laughs> i i found a way to challenge channel this and this is where my tab style. comes up it's culturally so, relevant yeah so culturally significant <laughs> and this is where my tab comes in is when we play and we play in this format we started to be like, we need to have challenges. We need to set like a parameter for all of us and we need to like build our deck and then come back in like a month or a few weeks or something and be like, okay, within those parameters, what did you do? What did you do? What did you do? And we, we've done this over many iterations. We picked different parameters. We're like, oh, the Lord of the Rings, pick your favorite character, do a thing. But the one we've been doing recently, and this is the one I want, I've been opening so many tabs up, <laughs> is we picked the theme of with the color identities and with the theme of play, how can I make a deck that represents a country in a in one either in its color identity or in how it plays? That's like an so, actual country, not like a country fun. within the game of Magic, no. right? Correct, like an actual okay. country. And so an we each country. had that precedent. And uh, what was funny was well, when we would like I have I had th- like hundreds of tabs open because <laughs> I'm I'm looking at all the color combinations. I'm looking at the the effects that the player like you can do. The cards aren't just. There's so many, this game has been around, like I said, since 1993, so they just keep iterating on abilities. They just say, hey, now we have this thing called First Strike. It lets you do this. Now we have this thing called Making Food. Do this. Oh, the and food. So they, yeah. And so Boo. like food is like a thing that you can create in the game, and it serves a, for a now an added function in the game, and it builds on, and it just keeps building and building uh-huh. and building and building <laughs> to a point now where it's like, you're looking at it, I'm like, what are the rules? And- <laughs> You have to you have to be like here. Read this book, yeah, and come back to me when you finish, and then I can maybe explain a little bit of, of what it is. And then the arguments so, over to, the rules. To be clear, Whoa. so there's one card, and then every year it updates like on some online database, or do you have to get a new card every time for each year? Again, I know nothing about so, this. It, Go for it. No, no, Anna, no, please. Is this, I, sorry, I, guys, I, I, I see this part of your question. I hear this part I'm <laughs> so annoying. I'm so annoying. No, it's like so every set they come out with is like a year yearly set or like couple comes out of every year and those sets will be in play for a few years right am i correct and that's considered standard and that's what the ones they play within the competitions and stuff but those cards not, aren't necessarily the same cards every year but sometimes they do bring back like throwback to old cards and they update the they update like the card itself or make the art different or make the but can you not use different. the old card you can you can you can still use the well, let's say okay here just let's again yeah. for total news yeah. There's a 2024 edition that came out this year. So just so we have a reference point. Uh-huh. So the 2024 competition edition, let's just reference that uh-huh. in terms of what you're saying. So in five years, they might have every year, they're going to have like a 25 and a 26 and uh-huh. a 27 and a 28. Every year, there's a new batch. Mm-hmm. There's multiple new batches. Multiple. Every year now, they're, they're like five like seven. different yeah. sets in a year. And they all kind out. of roll over at different times. And so, yeah, it yeah. Anyway. But what I would say, and this is part of the reason, another reason I enjoyed the the commander format is they don't care about uh-huh. the the for, the whether it came out recently, whether it came out old, like it was an age old one that you wanted to keep playing with. It's just like every card is is free game. You can like use whatever you want. Working man's format. It's like yeah. we don't care. You don't need to buy new cards. You can do whatever you want. And even yeah, so in that vein, whenever you see like a stylings of like a Lord of the Rings or these other flavored things that they like to throw in with a property, which is another way that they're trying to showcase or be like, hey, buy this Transformers card or buy this Tomb Raider card or Lord of the Rings. They just sometimes they'll just be like, this isn't a new card. This is just a new artwork 
over an old card that you've already been playing with. Now you just get to play with the new cool... like a skin. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Okay. Yeah. So does that help explain some of the well, not at all, but we're going to continue. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so the tab I have was w- wanting to build a deck uh in this in this competition we had that adhered to a country that I would pick. And I right. picked and I was picking Iran at this time. Oh, and yeah. so Naturally. there was the, the yeah, of course and so I had to, I had two options. I, I wanted to think thematically or I wanted to think with the color combination. And I kind okay. of found a way to do both in that I picked the I picked red, green, white as the colors. Interesting. Oh, the could flag. have been Italian or Mexican as well. It, it could have. But I think the part that makes it Iranian is the aggressive food <laughs> approach that I did. <laughs> did you, you're using the food uh, tokens a lot, right? I am aggressively using the foods. So I have oh this thing gosh. where this guy, this guy Feeding is eating the shit out of everybody. <laughs> cool. And I That's made sure want. my brother and cousin were felt very taken care of when we played this was a game of match <laughs> to the point where they died. <laughs> yeah, in the game. <laughs> well, actually, you overfed them. Ha- <laughs> you fed them to death. <laughs> I, I did feed them. What happened was my brother picked. Uh, there's another. There's different types of cards in the game, <laughs> um, and one of them is called planeswalkers, and they're they're these individual mm. represented characters that are like. They can traverse between these fictional planes that exist in the world of magic. Uh, there's like a lore behind it. But uh. he picked uh, America, and there's mm-hmm. this planeswalker that is Ooh. a big, bolsterous redhead, very just shitty, very uh-huh. toxic. And he's like, I'm going to do uh, our one of our prior presidents, M- Mr. Trump, uh, and his and a bunch of other political figures, and he just like was lo- lo- lobbying the whole time and not letting us do anything <laughs> in his own horrible way. And I'm like, I think you'd use the right countermeasures to my Iranian <laughs> approach. Was it red, white, and blue? The deck? It was red, white, and blue. Yeah. yeah. Who was the planeswalker? It's like, it's like Commander Gruff or Commodore Gruff or something. Oh, I don't know. Gruff, McGruff, Chicago, it's Illinois, six zero six five two. It's exactly. Gruff McGruff. Yeah. He was in the game. Don't. This is this is the Ooh. the commander commander Rocco the street chef. Oh, and I thought Rocco. the street chef was that was an apt thing for the Iranian uh, yeah. stuff too. I was like, he's making some kebab, cheddar you know, kebab. He's, yeah, he's, he's just like fanning, fanning it. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's just like this little guy. <laughs> oh, and well, what's funny is okay. So I gotta I gotta explain this too. Uh, every Christmas since we started playing, part of like a gift exchange that we do amongst each other is we make. In the in the magic community, there's kind of like a, it's it's understood and it's acceptable even from the the company. I think doesn't say anything, but they understand. People make proxies of cards, mm. and so uh, what we do is we we make our own proxies. We go, we'll like use custom art, or, or a lot of times we'll take fam art of our, ourselves and implement them on the cards, and be like, you play this card all the time. Well, one of the cards they made me this this last year before I got this deck, but it kind of inspired it was. Moskiar was as a food token. Like and it's just like a, <laughs> Yeah, like it's, the, it's the yogurt song. dish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yogurt what, and, oh, and cucumber with mint. Own. Yeah, so we had, we had printed it, and this was a food token. So I now I'm like, this is going in this deck. This is what he's serving everyone. <laughs> you have a Mustafiar just... like card that you slam on the table that like beats them all. No, so this is every time he makes food, or every time I make them make food, I okay. pull this card out and be like, this is the food you made. You made eight bowls, ten bowls, fifteen yes. bowls of Mustafiar. <laughs> I need to play with you. I need That's to play just a regular week for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you playing magic? Uh, we could get you, you into it, Kava. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'll gonna have try. the Muslim Musir card that I'll give to everybody. Hey, I will say this. I do not think he would ever get into it. I cannot sit still long enough for something no. like that. It sounds like so many rules. The only reason uh, I'm into it is because it helps me practice uh, having logic. Logic in my having brain. Having logic? You yes. Mean, like you, you don't feel like you have a logical no, brain? No, no, I'm is? insane. But like this no. game is like, let's center yourself and think in like a math terms and, and like, uh, you know, s- strategy. Yeah. There's something... I guess that's how scheduling is for me, but continue. Oh, Sorry. Gross. No, no, I, I, I relate. I definitely sit there sometimes and just shuffle my deck. I'm like, this is cause this is therapeutic <laughs> yeah. to me. I'm just like the feeling of cards kind of sliding. just sliding uh. together. I'm like, oh, they fit. They all fit. It's all orderly. You know, like what you're saying, Anna. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I've definitely gone down rabbit holes. And every time we do one of these challenges, it's kind of like a tab that reopens, a process that reopens for me. I'm like, okay. Buckle up. We're going to be up till 3 a.m. <laughs> really fine tuning because 
because you want to part of it is too the tabs that come up and you'd be wondering like well what how many tabs would you need you look at the color identity you'd look at the themes that you're trying the the abilities you're trying to really hone in on and there's in the commander format it's 100 cards but no one can be the same as another unless you have rats rats (laughs) was one of the ones where it was like you could have more than one of these cards so you could make it like 99 rats in your deck all i wanted was to overwhelm everyone with rats that's all <laughs> i wanted you pack can rat. you like create your thing like your persian deck that you're talking about your iranian deck is that a thing that you can like put on a, a site or something and you're like here's all the cards i have and yeah. other people could do it is that a thing that people do so that's part of it is like i they've made these uh websites where if you know you make a profile and then you log all of your decks and be like okay this is how i want to build it before i make any purchases yeah or before i want to make any printouts so i would prepare it there first and be like okay i think i have the balance i have the cards that will will draw me cards i have the cards that'll you know be defensive i have the cards that are all food related and um so do you then, have your Iran deck like made on that on one of these sites? Yeah, is that I can. Sh- you're I can absolutely. Sharing? Sh- I absolutely. I would love to. I share. would love to put that in the note, or we'd love to put that in the notes. I think for anybody who's playing Magic, who's who'd your be commander in... of that one? That is uh, Rocco. Oh, that's uh, right. Street Chef. He's he's a he's one red, one green, one white mana. That's it. Very, very, that's a great this, commander. Very, this is he's move. very this affordable. This, for a it's commander, again, yeah. Everything that I thought was like this is so irradiant. He's affordable. Mm-hmm. He's cost efficient. He's making foods. He's wanting everyone to aggressively work together. I was like, this. When you play against you me, you doing? will understand my culture. This is you have what to get a big fan. This is when you're fanning the uh, oh like the, the, the charcoal, the charcoal oh. as you're cooking the kebab and then you're flipping it. That's what you're doing. That's the yeah. dad way of doing it. Uh. Oh, as the the smoke is just blowing yeah, in the their face, they're just like, "Oh, <laughs> And then so, they just pull it right off of the skewer. They're like, yeah, oh, "Just get it while it's fresh." Yeah. It's just like, oh, oh, it's like hot in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. I have four food decks. I'll say that. Wow. So how many cards go into a t- like your Iran deck, for example, your country? Like, how many cards do you need for a deck like that? Like a regular one that you could play with, including like a commander deck. A, a commander deck, deck is is. <laughs> Depending on if it's in the fall catalog, no, um, it is. <laughs> it is. Uh, it's usually in that format. It's a hundred cards. But then okay. the tokens. The thing is, the tokens are not part of the count. The tokens are cards in your deck will make the tokens. Uh-huh. Something in in one of your cards will be like, make a food token. It adds things to the board. Or make and a rat. So you token. have the make a rat token. Make is a it, treasure yeah. token. But no, I love. Uh, it's always a fun thing. It's always a. Uh, uh, I enjoy doing it. I, I'd, I'd be happy to share, like you said, the the deck I put together. And I genuinely would love. It'd to be see really fun to see it. Yeah. Artistically, like the token thing is a space that I'm always like. This is a fun way of me carrying like the personal art within my decks and like being like, oh, this deck has their art in it and this their art in it and stuff. So I, I encourage you cool both to, to, uh, to do that. It'd be cool to mention something like that in the Discord and see how many people like love magic and what their deal is with it and see if that guarantee a lot of them interest. Do. I don't even know what yeah. I'm Here's the, let me tell you. I play yeah. black and green and I can't stop making decks where I make everyone die. I force them to kill themselves. Okay. So it's <laughs> Isn't that the point of the game is for them no, to I die, usually, right? It's, it's no, but them. it's how it's, you do it. I, it's it's not I about how you kill them. them to kill it's the themselves. Journey. Journey. So <laughs> I don't kill him. I just it's a make perfect them explanation of your of being friends with you. <laughs> Death touch, baby, but like evil. Yeah, yeah. watch out, Koro. Board sweeps. <laughs> I'll, I'll be careful. Board sweeps all there. I hate. Ooh, Sean. Sorry, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. We'll put this on the Patreon. Sean plays blue. I have never seen you so activated. This Shut is up. fascinating. This to is watch. part of me you don't. You don't know this part of me. So my husband. I don't. That's what I'm saying. It's the first time I've seen it to this I'm extent. So, I'm so my, glad. My husband always plays like Chris, you've unlocked Simic, something. Simic, like the green blue. Okay. Which I'm, I'm sorry. Come on. That thing he just like builds and builds and builds and builds. They get stronger and stronger. And then I pull out a freaking board wipe and it ruins his whole week. I ruin it. It makes me so happy. Oh, I that. love board wiping because it's just like, yeah, you wanted to build your little creatures? Too bad because this, this, I just murdered all of you. My Gorgon deck? Killer. Dude, that Gorgon deck will kill anyone. That's my best deck. I'm yelling. My kids are going trying to go to sleep. So I'm gonna I'm fine. I don't I don't care about anything. Gorgon deck. I don't care about anything. We'll have to play sometime. I hope I didn't step on your tab yeah, too much, like but I, I really loved that. No, no, you you need to get into the tab. You just like Anyway. Who's next? Thumbs up. Okay. Thank you, Coach. That was a lot uh, of fun. There was moments where I looked at Kava and he was fully gone. Like, he was just like. <laughs> 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 he was zoned out. <laughs> Can I, I like, mentally d- d- 
be in a different place at this point is when when he was smiling but there was nothing behind the smile you know what i mean he was just like yeah cool wait commando commando he's like maybe maybe we should ask them what their topic is before i bring up no No, not at all this is the point well yes that's the point now i know that there's a mustachior card that's all i remember from this entire tab which i'm that's deeply excited about thank you karash absolutely it was wonderful thank you um seriously Yes, fantastic. Uh, Made moving my day. on, Hannah, you want to go next, or should <laughs> sure, I? Sure, I'll go next. You go ahead. I'll go next. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, before I get into the tab itself, uh, one of my thoughts I always go back to since I was I don't know for as long as I could remember, I always like to think about what I would have been doing in other time periods. Mm, like yeah. if I were in the 1600s, what would I be doing besides like making babies and dying Being in childbirth? Burned at the stake which because is, you're a witch uh, is what we talked about. Well, too, that's right? more 1300s, so let's right. uh, well, let's keep it accurate. So if I was in the 1300s, I'd be Peter burned Stump, at the stake. You were still getting burned at the stake. Don't forget. Which that is was where? in the 1500s. But 1500s. That was in Central Europe. Do you also consider the Reagan's time reign. period also the location? Because I feel like I do. The, yeah, I feel like that really could make or break. Oh yeah, because your... if you go. If you go to like the Middle East in the 1500s, it'd be like completely different than England in the 1500s because yeah. in England they're just burning women for being women, and uh, I don't know what they were doing in the Middle you, East. Being, you could, could maybe could find it be a good loophole. math. I don't know. <laughs> you could be like, I'm over here in this little Galapagos island where they praise yeah. me. Yeah, or just think about it as if I'm a man because that's the only way I can actually entertain these thoughts without being or, like, oh, mm. I'd be dead. Oh, I'd be murdered. Oh, I'd be burned at stake. So. Right. I'll be often in diamonds in the shower. I'll be like, what would I be doing in the 1700s? Shower and shower thoughts, normal thoughts, right before I go to sleep thoughts. And it's always been fun to think about. So a lot of times it just ended up being like dead in childbirth or like a farm, farmer person or a nunnery, dude, because then I could just be a lesbian semi freely. Yeah, you could be a nun. I could see that. Yeah. I'd see you fully just, yeah, yeah. I could be, oh, it'd be really fun to be a nun. If I were a man, I would be a jester. And oh, yeah. because there's no fight in me. So I can't go to war. I can mm-hmm. only make people laugh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And along those lines, I finally found, I finally found what I think I'd actually be if mm-hmm. I were alive in the 1700s. And that would be a garden hermit. A AKA garden hermit. An ornamental hermit, which is a person who was paid a stipend to live and act as a hermit in the gardens of the wealthy landowner's estates. Yes. Hold on, let me yes. process that for a second. Yep. <laughs> like, yep. like a person so, who won't leave their house kind of hermit? Yes. So someone was paid to it. basically be online all day long? But someone like the was paid 1600s who equivalent. they pay to look like a, a homeless person in order to entertain guests. It's so, like the, the people that stand still and like... Oh, right, like that. Like yeah. the frozen, like painted... Oh. Painted all in white or gold <laughs> people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a garden hermit job actually sounds pretty dope if you get the right person who pays you slash owns... So uh, here's the thing. You. It's it's very um there's some human rights abuses definitely in here, but what? like it's the seventeen hundreds. No, England never. <laughs> so the the way that I found myself at this tab was I was looking at koi fish one day and I was like, why do they look like that? Isn't that stupid to look like that? Because they're bright colored and don't they get plucked up by birds? Mm-hmm. It turns out, yeah, koi fish are e- eaten by birds constantly because they mm-hmm. shouldn't exist like that. They've been bred to look pretty. They're what is known as an ornamental animal. So mm-hmm. they are they have uh-huh. been made. And then in, there was a little link at the bottom that said garden hermit. And I was like, what is this? Because I, I wanted to see what else was ornamental and living. And I, that's where I got this. And so I got a lot of this from the Wikipedia page on garden hermits and from um, some expert excerpts from Graham Campbell's book, The Hermit in the Garden from Imperial Rome to Garden Gnome. I also it's referenced. Uh, uh, I'm also referencing parts of episode 61 of the podcast Futility Closet, which I think I might have found my new favorite website that they make. It's a good name, Futility as well as Closet. A, Futility too. Closet. Okay. It's just a bunch of odd like stuff. They just talk about weird crap, like us. I was gonna say it's have us, <laughs> but way up. less insane. They're way less insane. They're like not interested sources. unless they're <laughs> missing something in their brain. It's not really as entertaining to listen to. I think they, from Wait, what I heard, they're pretty put together. <laughs> Uh, and we can't even when we're trying, which we're doing on this podcast, we aren't put together. So <laughs> here's the history. Like the other day when we, I saw you in person, and you were like, "Wow, you're bringing the ma- manic energy today." And I was like, "I yeah. am a hundred percent normal." Yeah, <laughs> no, that was the joke. Was is that I was freaking out and being insane, and then I kept he was saying also to being Hannah. Insane. I was being insane manic. first, and then I kept being like, yeah. Hannah, why are you being so weird right now? And then yeah. it was funny because you were starting to get freaked out, and I was like, I'm messing with you. I'm 
deeply uncomfortable oh, you in this, this line okay, for you frozen win. yogurt. Yeah, yeah, you win. <laughs> <laughs> because there's too many teenagers around me talking and having their phones on Dude, speakerphone. Anyway, continue. That kid. <laughs> the, the minute that guy whipped out his phone and put on music, I was like, it's over for us. And you immediately you were like, I have to leave. <laughs> Just like on speaker? Just like had Yes. Them... Oh, the teen system or whatever. It's his kryptonite. It destroys him. He's dead. Anyway, so the history of this. So let's go back to Georgian England, which is the 1700s. Okay. The trend for gardens at the time was like, we don't want all these like nice prissy French gardens anymore with like the perfect hedges and whatever. We want something to look windswept and wild and crazy. And so they started like, these rich people were like, well, I want to make my, I want to be able to get lost in my gardens. Oh my God. You know what this is? This what? is the 1700s equivalent of Burning Man, but like in their yards. <laughs> they want to play poor. Coachella. They're cosplaying yeah. poor people. I was about to get there. <laughs> it is a hundred percent cosplaying as poor people. Cosplaying the common man, which yeah. is we're burners. So this is our yeah. garden. The whole Georgian era at this time, everyone, even poets and artists, were all like leaning into this melancholia kind of vibe, where they're like, mm-hmm. sadness means you're smart, and and nature is sad, and life is smart. Set life is smart. Life is sad, and the romance of the rugged countryside, and the windswept cliffs, and Ooh. cliffs, and everyone's gonna die. We're all gonna die. Look at this beautiful graveyard, you know, stuff like that. But basically, I would never want to be involved. Any episode of our podcast, in. basically. <laughs> I, I cannot imagine living like that. I would never live like that. I don't, I hate graveyards. Okay, so it, but it showed that someone was intelligent. Like being sad was like trendy, kind of like, like this now. is trendy. Um, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. Sad is in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm so sad. It's like, did it ruin your life? Then you're not. I'm just kidding. I'm gatekeeping depression. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Here I am, gatekeeping depression. Okay, so <laughs> they loved being, they loved like playing sad and also thinking about sadness. So landowners would have this like sad, wild landscape, romantic landscape, and they would hide these little grottos, like waterfalls and caves and cottages for their guests to discover. So they would like, bring guests over and they would go like wandering the grounds and like find themselves in a little grotto and they could be like contemplating life and <laughs> being re- introspective and you know I'm, I sound mo- I'm mocking it because I, yeah, am. I was gonna say this sounds kind of uh, fun it would be cool yeah. to go in a garden and just see some <laughs> random grotto I'd be like that I wouldn't necessarily be sad in it but I do like discovering fun things it sounds like a video oh, game same. actually it's like a it Mario does, Brothers yeah. level I've been down or something. except yeah. you come across a, a, a pretend homeless person sometimes mm. yeah and they can't talk to you they're not uh, saying so, look you in the eye yeah. What what made it even more melancholy and romantic was mm-hmm. to find some guy in the village who fit the bill of a hermit and pay him to live in a little cottage or cave or like an already standing up ruin mm-hmm. or they built like a hermitage or whatever uh in your garden. So so far I'm not so seeing any problems. This sounds great. You're getting lodging. You get to live That's on nice I mean. land where you're not going to get yeah. hassled by the cops. Just like, this hey, I, I want you to, to be yeah. here, housed, mm-hmm. taken care of. Just how do I there. get this going now in 2024? <laughs> um, I don't want to pay rent anymore. I'm go, sick of it. You need <laughs> to go on the street and let TikTok people talk to you and ask you how it is to be homeless, and then give you oh, some donations. The and then freshman leave you art student photography project yeah. subjects. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you need to go like lay classic. somewhere and. And then you got to feel really, they are going to feel really good about themselves. Oh, yeah. right. They're like, I focus. You won't make money, but you will make some white person feel really good. And isn't, <laughs> and that, isn't that priceless? <laughs> yeah. By isn't white person, you're priceless? talking about their magic deck, I assume, correct? This is. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so ornamental humans uh, weren't the only fake thing in these gardens because those ornamental. <laughs> I love the term ornamental humans. I feel like that should be the tagline of today. Ornamental yeah, humans. Ornamental humans. <laughs> That's what I call the my ornamental... friends. Ornamental humans. <laughs> the, I'm a narcissist. These are my yeah. ornamental humans that follow me around. So they would also need to build like build places for these ornamental humans to live. So they would like build these fake buildings. Shout out to Stephen Ray Morris. Shout out to Stephen, yeah. yeah. These are like OG fake buildings where they would just make these like almost like Disneyland level looking like cottages. And like Gosh, perfectly core. set it up to Favorite. make. Yeah. <laughs> this is lo-fi, <laughs> lo-fi cottage, cottage core, core ornamental <laughs> humans, <laughs> and beats to study to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I'm going to be making my next magic deck yeah. too. Is just play that in the background. I'm just chilling. Uh, I, would I feel love so that. sad right now. This is really hitting the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I want to feel sad like the rich people in 1700 England felt. Uh, so they'd build these fake houses and sometimes they would use them to like hide like utility stuff like mm-hmm. 
gardening supplies. And sometimes they'd be like, you live in here, Hermit. And they'd like set it up perfectly to like make it look as magical and, and like romantic and, you know, sad as possible. Um, and they base these on an actual Italian estates, which uh, they used to have these oh, old Roman. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> they Roman hate the Italians. Bill. They're like, no, no. imagine your life as an Italian. That's the saddest <laughs> thing I can think of. This is what I need what to say every bread? day. She's <laughs> a sad person living in here just to remind me. I'm like, okay, it's I food that tastes good. Boo. <laughs> yeah. I hate food that tastes good. <laughs> we want gruel with gravy. <laughs> Beans on toast. <laughs> yeah. I want to eat blood pudding. Marmite. Uh, <laughs> just drink, drink the blood straight out of the rabbit we catch. Okay. Uh, I, uh, Krush, I don't know if you know this, but we cut out like minutes of laughter from this show. Like, oh, really? Just... You're, I, yeah. never, I don't think I know. Okay. No, I've never laughed. I know I never laughed, but like, anyway. So they call these the follies. So follies are like the fake, follies. like fake garden stuff for the hermits okay. to interact with Black. okay and i also like went down a follies hole <laughs> which i found something else that's so quintessentially europe and there are these things called famine follies which after the irish <laughs> potato <I'm>... famine <laughs> okay they attempted to give the suffering irish jobs instead of handouts because they didn't want them to think that they could just get free money from the government they'd make them build roads to nowhere uh, to earn these handouts or what? walls to nothing. Oh, yeah. And then peers into the middle of bogs just to get them working on something to make them like, so it doesn't feel like they're getting free handouts from the government. You know, so, <laughs> sometimes I think we're crazy, where things what have gotten shit? crazy now. And I'm like, no, things like no, this remind no, no. me. We've always been, there's always been just oh. craziness. Oh, my we've God. Always been, we've always been this way. Off our rockers. Every, single, every year of human existence has <laughs> been this. <laughs> Uh, anyway, back from follies. I'm going back to the uh, the ornamental humans. Ah, and, okay. The more um, sane I- item. The, sa- the <laughs> same thing. So there was an advertisement that that was found by Graham Campbell, the guy who wrote that book, mm-hmm. that, from the 1797 that reads as a job listing where the requirement of the job for garden hermit was such. It was, quote, the hermit, oh, is, nev- is, the hermit is never to leave the place and or hold conversation with anyone for seven years during which he is neither to wash himself or cleanse himself in any way whatever, but to let his hair and nails both on his hands and feet grow as long as nature will permit them. So you just got to look like a piece of crap. Listen, minus the not showering and cutting, even the cutting your hair and nails part, but just minus the not showering yeah. part, I can Sounds great. honestly think of like five people off the top of my head immediately, uh-huh. specific what? names. What that brought that's them what to their friends? Yes. <laughs> What brought them to mm-hmm. seven years, I wonder? Like, they were like, it seven depended. years is the sweet spot. That's you where we really see the You swallow a piece of gum at the beginning, and then by the end of the digestion <laughs> period, that's yeah. when you can be free. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you have to watch. They gotta, you got to pass. The, it's called the passing of the gum, and everyone passing watches you gum. poop the gum out, and then uh, you're the, released. It's the season. It's like everyone gathers around. It's like, oh, yes, it's the passing of the gum. Mm. Uh, my yeah, guess would like, be that they would die <laughs> after seven years of not showering or cutting your hair or, like, cutting your nails. Oh, no. There's no. that guy who hasn't showered in 40 years. Have you seen him? Oh, there was the Persian guy that didn't shower. Yeah. When he was That's like who 80, it was. That's died. who I'm talking about. Yeah. He died? Uh, he died after he had to shower. <laughs> he, oh, he, it was like 70 years. And yeah, he had not show- showered they, they for many, many, many years. They washed him and he yeah. perished. Mm-hmm. He had a perfect like biome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it's living, true. Like he couldn't live without the grime Shout that he collected. <laughs> Shout out to our brethren. Yeah. One of your boys, dude. One there he is. He went cold turkey. Yeah, not showering is not a typical trait of Persians. We're excessively no, no. clean. From what I've ever, what I've learned about with the Viking episode with the Persian yeah. guy who described the Vikings yeah, as like, absolutely Ugh. disgusting. Yeah, he's like, what are they wearing? <laughs> <laughs> they, these people don't this is show. Not part of the, the magic card fashion show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I remember that episode. You were like, oh, we've never uh. changed. We haven't. We just haven't changed. Okay. Wait. So, so, do you have an answer for why seven years, or we were just thinking about that? It depended Sorry. on the ju- the person. So, a okay. lot of these, I mean, it was like trendy to be like, I have a a man who lives <laughs> on my estate. I, am, I pay <laughs> a <laughs> funny man. Yeah. <laughs> I have a funny man who, and sometimes they'd be like, okay, you gotta live here for just the summer and entertain my friends, and they would have them like interact with the friends as like a set piece to their garden. Yeah. Yeah. So like these. The friends would come and be like, get this wisdom from this person oh. who would like act as this old wise like wizard druid because they would dress as druids. A lot of the time they'd be like, put these robes on. Put this on. He's like, be Gandalf. over there. <laughs> yeah. Because, you because shall not the... pass. <laughs> They're like, you can't talk. Yeah. They like zap him with a taser. No, it's 700. <laughs> um, 
be a whip. I guess the 1700s uh, uh, version of a taser is just Stabbing a whip, him. right? Right. A flog? <laughs> yeah. Flog, yeah. Flog, I don't probably. I don't know why we're, I don't know why I went here. Um, Spikes. <laughs> Uh, and they offered good. They offered good pay, so they get like six hundred guineas. I don't know how many that is, but I pictured guinea pigs, and that was really cute. Your inflation calculator uh, doesn't have that in there. How many? How? I don't what's think the equivalent of six hundred guinea, guinea pigs in, in today's world? Years? They got paid well because, like, you're they're like you're like, hey, you are you're some laborer from the village. We're gonna pay you to not be that anymore and just live here as an old crazy druid. And at the time, druids and magic and King Arthur and all those legends were really making a comeback. People were loving all that weird legends and like France got in on the sprucing up the Arthurian legends with like sex because <laughs> that's thanks. France. Sex makes um, everything better in stories. Yeah. yeah. They added Lancelot. They added the love triangle. And it's like, guys, <laughs> all right. We know drama. Uh, they were the TN- TV- TNT of their generation. <laughs> right. They they we were. And the, they're like, this Welsh legend is just full of fighting and sadness. We're going to add a love triangle nice. and we're going to it's going to be hot anyway. So that was all part of it, like this, like this mystique of like there's this old druid living in a cave, and so uh, some were required to just not even wear shoes. So it depended on the person. They're like, here are my requirements for my um, ornamental human, yeah. and uh, we need to put you guys in some long robes, or you got to look dirty, or you can clean yourself, but you just got to be a wise man. And sometimes they'd even put a dunce cap on them, which was what we would think of a dunce cap, but I think it's more like a wizard cap. A wizard cap. <laughs> wizard yeah. This is literally just Walt Disney creating yeah. Disney World. But <laughs> yeah, abs- absolutely. That's all this but is. Along with probably along with the anti Semitism <laughs> included <laughs> as well. <laughs> Put these ears on, make it, make your voice higher pitched. Yeah. yeah. And, and and live. Yeah. As my <laughs> personal I haven't showered in seven years. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you say it Gorsh. as the English would have said? <laughs> <laughs> my toenails stop stop <laughs> stop it okay <laughs> oh, uh, so many times <laughs> I'm gonna have some weird I'm gonna have some weird diapers <laughs> oh welcome welcome to the club ornamental uh, hermit uh, Mickey I, I'm going to Disneyland later this week actually <laughs> That's all you're going to see gotta now. you got to wear a druid robe and, and not fall in everything. I'm like, are you a garden hermit? <laughs> As I like, hug Vicky. What's up, ornamental human? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, look, if they're going to pay me 600 guineas to be an ornamental human, I will do whatever they want. That's true. Uh, so there is an example. So many times the hermits would actually be part of some performance or experience. They were like weirdly into like full-blown experiences like we this do today is... where it's like. Yeah. Disneyland. It's, yeah. it's like an Airbnb experience. That's what yeah, they're doing. Yeah, this, this is Disneyland with like way more typhoid and whatever. Uh, actually, metal. No, I think there's probably the same amount of typhoid in Disneyland <laughs> yeah, now. The... <laughs> it's like the Simpsons episode where Lisa drinks the water at the yeah, yeah. <laughs> at Duck like, Land. I am at, what does she say? <laughs> oh, I'm the lizard the queen. Is that what she says? Uh, there's an example of there being garden hermits as far back as the 1500s. So this isn't just the 1700s. Wow. These have been around, but in some form or another. Um, yeah. With the 1500s, won- they were more like entertainers. So there's one performance where the Queen of England showed up at some guy's <gasps> estate, Elizabeth I, uh, and it's, she went to this Theobald's estate like garden performance, like hermit performance, and she walks in, and the hermit's there to greet her, and he's like. <laughs> He's like, my sovereign lady and most gracious queen, be not displeased that one so meanly clad presumes to stand thus boldly in the way that leads into this house accounted yours. So pretty much saying, hey, sorry I look like this. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm here. Sounds like a Shakespearean I look like play crap. at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because this is what uh, Shakespeare lived. I'm sorry I look like absolute garbage. Welcome to the party. And then they f- like went on to be like, wrote a fake prophecy for her, like, like lauding her being a virgin and we're like if you're stay a virgin for 33 years you'll be the the, the legendary queen and the hermit said all of this this poor guy who was probably like some laborer was like i guess i'm talking to the queen of england now and i'm wearing a druid robe <laughs> listen that's an opportunity uh, he never thought he would have that's yeah. great for your no. resume be like i've talked to the queen yeah exactly mm-hmm. if you want to so, be on my podcast LinkedIn. <laughs> if you are if you're <laughs> my, my, pod- <laughs> my druid podcast <laughs> You will have 33 years of of amazing reign in service. Uh, yeah, she was like, ah, ha, ha, ha. and then they gave her like a bunch of treasure, oh. rich people. Still treasure, yeah. Take home. Um, so one of the first to be considered an ornamental hermit was Francis of Paola. And this was actually in Italy. And he founded some Catholic order that's still around today where they that's like cool. swear uh, poverty and they don't eat meat and they just like live solo and don't talk. They're like monks. And so he was like, 
kind of, but like yeah, okay. hermits. And so he was Hermit 13 monks, yeah. when he was like, I'm going to never live with anybody. 13 year old. Ah, um, does, yeah, many 13 year olds go yeah, through that. Yeah. Fifteen. This guy never <laughs> left it. 15, he decided to live in solitude and then he lived, lived in a cave on his dad's land. So <laughs> he's still kind of Nepo baby. Trust it fun up, kid. But, yeah. 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 I'm going to live in a cave <laughs> in my dad's land because my dad's yeah. a landowner. <laughs> you can't even go out into the wilderness and live in a cave with like yeah. bears or whatever. I'm sorry that so my this dad dude... doesn't own a cave. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Sorry, this is from sort of a place of privilege where my yeah. parents gave me this cave. Um, so Francis of Paola is like really fascinating dude, and I'm going to okay. keep his tab open. Okay. Uh, but by the time he was an adult, he was living he was with the living with the king of France as like a like a fun little advisor, like a fun fake hermit advisor. Hermit advisor. I need one of those. Um, Don't we all? And then an, another <laughs> description. Right. I'll be look. I'll give you guys advice. I I would. I'll, I'll yeah. dole advice doesn't advice have to be good. Not... You can just give advice. Exactly. Give advice. Yeah. Exactly. You it should be a cautionary tale. Up. Like you yeah. can take my advice. You could end up like this. <laughs> yeah. Look at me, a hermit wearing nothing Living but a robe. Living on my own robe. cave. A strong, just independent eating grass. <laughs> strong, independent. I am a strong, independent hermit. hermit. All right. <laughs> and I deserve every right that non hermits have. <laughs> Guys, I feel insane. Recording at night she is insane. It. it is true. <laughs> Never the, I'm alive at night, and he's yeah. alive in the morning. I'm alive in the I morning. Think yeah. I'm thriving. You okay. are. I was like, you do have a certain energy about you that we don't have. When this we're is like, yeah. uh, what's? I'm uh, alive what, right now. Yeah. What, what was the movie? Was it um, Gremlins? When like after a certain time, <laughs> it's like the, the energy just shift. It's like a that kind of thing. It's like Mogwai. <laughs> I'm Gizmo and she's all the other gremlins that get crazy. <laughs> I'm going. I'm a green, red, black gremlin yeah. with my rats. For some, did you see Gremlins too, Hannah? <laughs> I think I, know, I, I just like you're talking about you. it. You talked about it on our AMA when it was like oh, what's that's the right. Worst we did talk about the it. best bad movie, and you're like, bad movie. I said Troll Two, and you're like Gremlins. gremlins <laughs> we too. both talked Chris, about did Trolls you see and the gremlins. second Gremlins. I have a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. Anyway, if, if Hannah's not seen it, then I'm going to skip it. But for some reason, yeah, you're please. the vegetable gremlin. I don't know why. That's the first one that All popped right. into mind. Me or him? You. Oh, um, the thank you. The vegetable gremlin like grows like tomatoes out of its face and back. I just seem like something you there would do. Good. There we go. That makes sense. I'm looking at vegetable <laughs> gremlin. <laughs> oh, come on, no. man. <laughs> this is what... <laughs> that looks like a like a like an orangutan with like leaf ears. I don't like this thing. It's itself. It's self sustaining. It grows its own food. It's awesome. Uh, oh, like, like 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 the birds should do with guano islands. Just yeah, it can eat its, its, it's, eat its own flesh and it continues to live. That's the weird morbid thing about it that I thought you would appreciate. Oh, thank that's you. Weird. That's the sweetest thing. It's <laughs> <laughs> really nice. You know, I think I will keep you as a friend after all. <laughs> Thanks. Gonna... I'll let you to keep being an ornamental human <laughs> you, in my you life. Could his, you could be the, his ornamental. <laughs> How did I also wonder if like it doesn't? You said it's from 15th century to 17th century. Yeah. How I like it couldn't have just been an overnight. Like, hey, this is a thing. I feel like it's it was a subtle, slow. Like, yeah, I'll keep you around, and then slowly it's like, don't don't worry about sharing, and then just a slow and slow yeah. degradation. It's like. You used to be like a friend, and now I'm like, I'm just kind of interested in having you around. <laughs> stop talking. Just stop talking. I can't. And then <laughs> as just, long as you I'll don't talk, you, you can <laughs> stay here. <laughs> I'll pay you. Like, if that's what's keeping you from wanting to keep doing this, I'll just pay you. And then two, yeah. a century in, they're like, this is a thing. Like, everyone's doing it. The King of France it. is like, let me consult my hermit that I <laughs> yeah. got from Italy. <laughs> I, I here's my guess is that like I know that when Shakespeare was around and writing plays, he based almost all of his plays in Italy. So it was very like trendy to be into Italy and Italian crap like in the 16 1500s and 1600s. Mm -hmm. And so I wouldn't be surprised if they were like, let's also do what the Italians do, which is keep people as sort of pets on their. <laughs> <laughs> in I think their we land. understood <laughs> what they're doing. This is what I interpreted. Uh, another description of a hermit. Is um, a garden herb, but it's from 1784, and it's a guide to a, an estate in Shropshire owned by Richard Hill. So they had these guides to be like, if you're going to go to Dick this first Hill. person's place, <laughs> welcome to Dick Hill. This is the hermit that lives here. <laughs> the His hermit is... of Dick Hill would be an incredible name for a comic book or a graphic novel. The hermit of My Dick autobiography. Hill. Yeah, the autobiography. Yeah. <laughs> The, the 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 untold story of corruption, the Hermit of Dick Hill, the Hermit. That should be the name of a podcast, the Hermit of Dick Hill. 
<laughs> untold story of Kurosh's <laughs> magic deck. If we still... <laughs> that, that sounds like third part. <laughs> his, his magic deck, the Hermit of... Yeah. yeah. Um, if we still named episodes like we used to, I would want to call this the Hermit of Dick Hill. The Hermit of Dick Hill ah. would have been great. Yeah, of Deck Hill. No, um, so oh, we'll get around to your tab. Just a minute. I'm almost done. It's um, okay. So, you, so <laughs> this guy describes this. Listen, this... <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> I'm feeling insane. So, <laughs> this is another Seven... att- attribute of nighttime recordings: is the giggles and the silliness. No, no, that's no, a normal no, thing for you guys. Just oh, any yeah. time of day. It's far from the We're both okay. insane. I hope you're having There's a good always... time. That's all that matters. I'm having a great time. <laughs> great, good. That's one thing we can if do. If you guys want to just pay fun. me to stay here and just listen, <laughs> just listen. Yeah. I will gladly be. St- I will gladly be this podcast, our, like designated studio or- ornamental, audience. Yeah, our ornamental, ornamental tab. Host. I could be your ornamental tab, just on the side. Yes, or like whatever that guy is for Conan. We just look at you every once in a while. And we're like, garage. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what the guy is. What's that guy's name? Andy? No, what is his name? Andy Kaufman. Oh yeah. No, the one in Con- Conan's guy that he plays off of. Is it Andy Kaufman? No, no, Andy Kaufman's, Kaufman's full on dead, from, maybe. Yeah, from the 80s. Um, oh, you're right. No, I'm thinking of someone else. Sorry. It's Conan's, Sona is the Conan's one guy. De- designated Not Andy Herman. Richter you're talking about. It's Andy Richter. <laughs> oh, Andy Richter talks shit Richter. the whole time, though. But Andy Richter's on... Oh, I, I know. About the, Andy the Richter is Conan's ornamental human, right. is what I'm saying. Or Ed McMahon. So it, 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 pre- it exists in today's world, is what you're saying. It does. Gestures okay. and ornamental... I mean, anyway. So, I gotta get through this. So... A guest a guest describes the hermit like this. He says, quote, you pull a bell and gain admittance. The hermit is generally in a sitting posture with a table before him on which is a skull, the emblem nice. of mortality, an hourglass, a book, and a pair of spectacles. The, ben- the venerable barefooted father, whose name is Francis, if awake, always rises up at the approach of strangers. He seems about 90 years of age, yet has all his sense to admiration. He is tolerably conversant and far from being unpolite. Tolerably so conversant. Like... <laughs> He's fine. He's all right. It's like us at every convention. Tolerably <laughs> conversant. <laughs> or in some cases, intolerably, depending on yeah, much who more we're sitting next to. We've driven some people away. I will say that much. Oh, very much um, so. You know, I will say this sincerely. Do away with me. Just like put me... <laughs> Put me in a in a hole somewhere, you know. Just roll me off into a just hole. Roll me up into a put garden. Put me in a cave. Yeah, put me into a cave on my Take dad's me out property. of that Irish that Irish famine built <laughs> the road to nowhere, the bog <laughs> and just push me in. So, um, dick, if dick, you lacked dick. the funds, <laughs> if you dick hill, dick if you hill. lacked, <laughs> just roll me out of dick hill. Roll me down it. Roll me down Dick Hill. That's a great phrase, <laughs> That too. sounds like a country song. Yeah, as I said, that's a chorus well, to a song. Roll me down. Should I grab my guitar? Dick he rolled me down Dick Hill. <laughs> Here I go. <laughs> Once again. Down Dick Hill. No, it's like Johnny Cash, and it's yeah. like, roll, roll, roll. Roll me down Dick Hill. Okay, let's, let's, let's have, okay, I can't read. Is you lack the funds to still... If you if you lacked the fund to still this... wanted everyone to come to your parties, mm-hmm. you could always fake the hermit by setting up a little hut and making it look like he just left Home and like alone. was wandering around. Oh, yes. you just or straight up. <laughs> you could just have a straight up dummy hermit. Yeah, you could have uh, like, like a cardboard cutout of Michael Jordan dancing in the window. Yeah, the like Home behind alone. The shadow. Like where he's yeah. just like, hey, that house. I thought you said they left. I'm a hermit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not showering I'm... doing this up and down. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, and Macaulay Jingle Culkin's bell, down there like, ooh, ooh. That song was around back then, right? Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> In an interview with the Boston Globe, author Graham Campbell, the dude who wrote that book, says, quote, if there was one who lived in a cave, he had a bell, and you could get cave service. He could ring it. Uh, so you could ring the bell. Uh, and cave service is tea. so overpriced. I know. You know it could bankrupt uh, uh, you your entire that? family. It's first the valet, next yeah. the cave surface. Do not touch the mini liquors inside the refrigerators. <laughs> Look, that sign was written so small. How would they, I, I didn't know. Anyway, a pot of tea or something would be brought, though he couldn't talk to the servants. There's no suggestion of cruelty, besides the fact of being basically owned, of course. Uh, and around the 1800s, people were like, we're kind of bored of these ornamental humans, garden mm-hmm. hermits. And they kind of fell out of favor because... As industrialization picked up, homelessness became more of a thing. 
and people oh. started valuing work and actually being able to work for your like a living way yeah. above like let's just pay this person to exist <laughs> as a gross man uh and slowly turned into the way we view what we consider hermits now which are you know people on the edges of society or like such as like world war ii vets or world war one vets coming back shell-shocked like yeah. thousands of them just went and lived in the forest because they literally didn't know what to do yeah. They were so like PTSD'd out that they were yeah. like, I guess I'm going to be by myself for the next 50 years. And that started becoming like a wow. They can't even handle like this. A little and bit now of we world s- war. A little bit of like, <laughs> bl- watch it. Oh, you watched your friend's head get blown up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can go live in the forest. Yeah. Someone stop me. Um. So the garden hermit. So now it's now we hate hermits pretty much. We, everyone's like hobos are. Ew. And it's like, guys, isn't there? Let's I- just. I forget in what culture it, it's it's uh, maybe in Korean culture or, or in Japanese culture. There's like the shut in where they they they're shut ins. They stay. They order food and they they, they just they get paid otaku? to be. I nah, they, I don't, it might did be. you say otaku? <laughs> Isn't that what otaku originally was? No, that just means fan, like a fan of like something. There's a term for it. I, I think it's is it neat. I'm gonna look it out. Actually, there's something like to it, but there there that. is something that is like regarded in in yeah. some ways of like, oh, this is not necessarily maybe respected or there's there's like a notoriety to it that still holds in that culture. I, I I can't speak to it exactly, but I had a friend who was who had someone he knew in his family that was that. Wow! Um, so they just were like paid to stay. They inside? were just like, I you you are okay. You do this. I will take care. Like I will bring you food. Oh. I will take care of you and make sure you never have to. Because they were like, I choose not to, and so they just had everything Whoa. like kind of like. Hikomori we is what you're thinking is, by the way, is what the Japanese version of it is. What is? Is when they people who go su- through severe social withdrawal, uh, completely oh. from society, and seeking extreme degrees of social isolation and confinement. Dude, have you guys ever seen that? Was it Nasubi, the guy who that he had to like survive uh, on just like uh, sweepstakes and like. I, there's a documentary alone. about it or something, right? Oh, did they make a documentary? I think so. Like, Dude, I watched like that original or series. He was in total. That, no, as long as it took him until, like, I think it was, he had to reach a certain number of, like, I can't remember. But anyway, he didn't know he was on a reality TV show. And they kept, like, kidnapping him. And he, it, like, ruined him. <laughs> oh. He's fine now, I think. Anyway. Yeah, sorry. That's I went my on that tab. Thing. Okay. That's my tab. <laughs> that was a journey. So, ornamental. Yeah. I'll, I'll make great. a Valentine that says I'll be your ornamental human, or I'll climb your, <laughs> di- I'll climb, I'll climb your dick hill. Holiday, uh, five hundred tabs merchandise. There you go. Or if someone buy your have a ornamental baby. human. Oh, oh, it's an. That's ornament. a great idea. A hermit ornament. Hermit ornamental human. <laughs> you are hired. Yes. So far, we got a five hundred open tabs magic <laughs> deck and an ornamental human. We're making money. Merchandising. Merchandising. We don't need any on. more money. We have yeah. enough. <laughs> we have so m- we have our dad's cave that we live in. <clears throat> it's perfect. Okay, uh, it's my tab. What do you have for us today, Kavit? Thank you for that. Uh, I don't Thank know you. if I can You're compete welcome. with ornamental humans, but mine's fun. <laughs> that's today. a tough act to follow. I, I, yeah, I'm tough act to follow. Uh, so Thanks. the tab, <laughs> my tab. Uh, I wanted to originally use this for Halloween, but oh. it wasn't really long enough for a full tab. So oh, perfect. I was very excited that we got to have a guest host, which means I can have like, this is what the guest ones are fun for. There's a lot of tabs that we yeah. want to do full episodes on, but it's not long enough. So we get to uh-huh. uh, put it in one of these ones. So this is about U.S. patent number 1749090. Oh my God. This is the fifth time this week. I knew it. About this <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Why does this keep how coming do, up? Listen. How did I know you were going to do this? Contain your excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will go into detail about what it is, but first, <laughs> context. Police interrogations have come a long way, right? So, so no, <laughs> exactly. No, of course, of course they haven't. <laughs> They've only gotten worse. I was like, wait, <laughs> yeah. absolutely not. No, that was the joke. Remember Gitmo? Remember waterboarding? Yeah, remember how shit just like radicalized people more <laughs> rather than actually getting them to confess to anything? Have you seen that meme that's like? Waterboarding at Guantanamo Bay sounds really fun if you don't know what it is. Yeah, it's true. It does sound like a water park of some sort. I'll yeah. have two. I'll have two yeah. of those. Uh, extra bourbon. Yeah, yes. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't go well. And it like I said, it, it just results in a lot of false confessions and radicalization. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. Uh, apparently, 
Oh, false confession. Of of false confession happening in the background. Yeah, <laughs> that Lord. was perfect cue. <laughs> Goodness, we'll keep that in. Who's no. getting tortured in the back? Uh, <laughs> well, Audible probably Bay not. water. <laughs> yeah, what? Someone's yep. getting waterboarded. <laughs> my youngest is getting waterboarded by my oldest. That's what's happening. <laughs> Look, uh, it's, so it's waterboard o'clock. It's waterboard o'clock. So apparently, this has been a thorn in the side of law enforcement for many, many years, and it's what led to the creation of today's patent. So, let's go back oh. in time. We're gonna go back in time to the 1920s. In the 1920s, Art okay. Deco is quickly becoming the most popular art movement. An ambitious Reza Shah ends the reign of the extremely incompetent uh, Rajar dynasty, and uh, the Harlem Renaissance is in full swing. It's a good time. Yes, three uh, the three things I think of whenever I think of the 1920s. Yeah, <laughs> the Rajar dynasty ending is a really big deal for us, but <clears throat> huge. No, I know I'm yeah. being an, an idiot. <laughs> I know I'm joking. <laughs> now the Rajar dynasty was kind of a big deal. <laughs> it was kind of a kind of a dis- famously a disaster of like being very poorly run. So. Also, if you remember during this time in history, uh, America is fully in the throes of prohibition, which means there's suddenly a whole new class of criminals, both invented by the state because what people were already doing suddenly became illegal overnight, but also Uh some new super horrible, terrible criminals that didn't exist before. Oh, And obviously everyone couldn't be a cop. But a lot of people were not huge fans of crime in general. <laughs> and Darn. they wanted to do whatever they could to help. Just One such person. Everyone have being a cop and just arresting each other in just a big arresting circle. Left turn. and right. That's all they did in the 1920s. They went oh, and got you're illegal going too booze. Fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you are. No, you are. Hey, no, you try to shoot me. Citizens anyway, arrest. sorry. I, I, ju- I stepped right on your buildup of your tap. So please. It's okay. Uh, um, one such person who wanted to help out. Her name was Helene... Adelaide Shelby, who oh. was from our very own Oakland, California. So I can hey. only imagine the state of hyphiness she was in when coming up with this shit. She <laughs> took ghostwriting a little too literally. Oh, no. Oh, oh spooky. So in August 1927, Helene filed a patent for, quote, an apparatus for obtaining criminal confessions and photographically record them, which is extremely unthiz because everyone in the East Bay knows don't tattletale. That's the number one ruling. Sorry, no. I have to give my East Bay Oakland references. You have to, yeah. No, re- represent. Uh, I'm anyway. just nodding like a South Bay person who wants right? to feel you cool. You guys talked about, about magic cards. I'm going to talk about <laughs> Can you Drake. understand it, man? Like, I don't understand <laughs> no. any of this slang and I'm, lingo. I'm fully Silicon Valley. People like, in the East Bay like, are like red, black, South green Bay. combinations, <laughs> and they have tokens. Oh, my God. That's so jund. <laughs> that's so, you're right. That is 100%. Uh, so at first, the device sounds pretty <laughs> innocuous, right? All yeah, it said yes. was, yeah, an apparatus for obtaining criminal confessions and photographically recording them. The first okay. thing I thought of was Errol Morris's Interatron. Do you guys know the Interatron? No. The entire, what? N- no. Never heard of this. You know Errol Morris, the documentary yeah. filmmaker? Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, so the Interatron is basically, it's effectively like a, kind of like this, like where you do a Zoom call where you're looking directly into the camera and the other person's looking directly in the camera. So the way he conducts his interviews is he's got like this reflective mirror system where he's got a camera that he's talking into and then the subject has a camera directly on them and they're being recorded. That way the subject can talk directly into the camera as they're answering the questions. So it feels like a more oh. intimate experience as opposed to like, you know, a wide shot where you're like in the corner mm-hmm. like this, like looking and talking off camera. Sorry, Whoa, you probably okay. didn't hear any of that because I walked away from the mic. No, um, it was it was a little bit it. of ominous. I still hear it. That's cool. Um, that's what it sounded like at first, but apparently it's not that at all. Uh, it all seems no. pretty basic until you read further. Helene goes on to state, it is a well-known fact in criminal practices that confessions obtained initially from those suspected of crimes through ordinary channels are almost invariably later retracted. So so she knew that even back then. She knew that even back then. So how do oh we get gosh. them to tell the truth? Hey. There's the rub. So okay. this next part has nothing to do with the patent and it's pure speculation, but uh, I did read this in all the different research that I was doing for this. And I think there's a ring of truth to it. And I think it's an ex- interesting extrapolation. So okay. I would prefer you not to ruin our academic reputation. Yes, this is factual completely of what I'm saying right now. And it's scientifically <laughs> proven. Look it up, liberal. Uh, anyway. <laughs> dare you. <laughs> now, at this point in time in the 1920s, Uh, America and the rest of the world has really been through it. 
World War II racked up a worldwide death toll of nearly 20 million people. And if that wasn't bad enough, the Spanish flu killed more than double that, 50 million. So that's a World lot War of people. That's like 70 million people that have died like in the past five years, essentially, between it's World insane. War. It's 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 a number so staggering, like I can't even wrap my head around it. Uh-uh. Yeah. And in both of the cases, most of the people that died were between like 20 and 40. So they left behind parents, spouses, sweethearts, kids, whoever, like all kinds of people. Designated um, humans. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> Designated humans. Designated humans, exactly. <laughs> Hermits are now without yeah. owners. There's yeah. no, the ornamental We're- humans have nowhere to ornament themselves onto. <laughs> exactly. They don't, except Sorry, for the forest where they all joke. went. <laughs> and it's a make hugely important demographic. You want. <laughs> yeah, make all the jokes you want. I just get very Jeez. like authoritative when I speak, but don't be afraid. You just to... have to interrupt him. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> for the first few, like epi- few episodes, I was like, do I just let him talk, or do I say something? <laughs> no, I'm just not used no, no, to no. it. I'm. I grew up in a family where I have to keep talking louder and louder to get heard. So I'm yeah, like, yeah. you gotta just yell over me because that's how I've grown, uh-huh. I've grown up. Um, yep. Anyway, a lot of people are dead. <laughs> The world's awful, uh, and somehow, are you laughing at everyone being dead? Of course you are. No, you were just like we were like laughing. They're like, anyway, so everybody's What's dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the lead-in that was fun. It's dead. Everyone's dead. Everyone's Everyone. dead. Uh-huh. It's it's terrible. It's scary. You don't know what happened. So this might explain the rise of spiritualism having a big uh-huh. revival in the 1920s. Hannah, I thought you might know a little bit about spiritualism. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Kurosh, how much do you yeah, know about spiritualism? Um, in I don't I don't think I know too much. Maybe anecdotally, but in what okay. I don't know. No, um, I, I'm just gonna say no. I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's not a quiz. I just was curious. Um, I don't Hannah, like creepy do you, things, so no. <laughs> do you want to? Uh, I can give you the the overview of it, but Hannah, do you want to explain um, to Kurosh and the audience? Kind of briefly oh, what spiritualism is. Are you sure me? Okay. No, it's just everybody got really into the idea of communicating with the dead by any means. So like mm-hmm. seances and death photography, like ghost photography, or going to these like houses and, and, and ex- or like there's there's there that lady in New York who could like, t- like tell people's like future by hitting on the floor or like all this crazy stuff. It was a bunch yeah. of like magic tricks that made people believe that they were talking to their dead loved ones. And uh, it went crazy. Everyone went nuts for it, especially like certain authors it wasn't arthur conan doyle who was yep. like obsessed with it look at you and then, was it who do you i just know? learned all was... this while researching it and you already know oh. all of this not not surprised. i don't know anything good job continue sorry was it houdini who was like i'm gonna ruin this man's life and would always constantly he was like oh well, when i die uh try to have seances for me and i'll never come back or whatever yeah. i can't remember something like that Were you i think i made a, I, I think i had a really dumb moment there where i mixed I guess I, th- I when you said spiritualism, I mix it with just spirituality. I mean, okay. I think it's by design. Yeah, it you're sounds, like I don't yeah. have I'm like, any spirits. idea what spirituality is. I'm like, wait, do I not know? This sounds like a question. Like, there's it is more a very to it. generic term too. Like, spiritualism okay. yeah. doesn't sound like anything specific. It sounds like a very broad term. But you're right, Hannah. Like all, all what you're talking about. Also, the magician part of it was interesting in terms of what I was reading, which is not what my tabs about. Mm-hmm. But I did come across that. Yeah. But it was sort of like these two camps where a magician's mm-hmm. job fundamentally is to be like, it's all a show. Like everything uh-huh. is fake. So magicians were like, we fundamentally do not believe in this concept because that uh-huh. is what we're being paid to do on earth. So they were like, we're in on the scam. Um, That's why Houdini was like, this is so stupid. Yeah, yeah. You guys are it's, so dumb. It's really interesting just to see believe that. believe whatever photo somebody makes. Or there's that one, have you seen yeah. the, Mary, the Mary Todd Lincoln photo where she gets a photo she taken. She was apparently they, one too. Yeah, she was into spiritualism. She, uh, oh, she went kind of crazy, understandably. Sure. After watching your husband get shot and die. Um she she had this picture taken from a spiritual like a spiritualist photographer yeah. who had like superimposed Lincoln behind her with his hand on her shoulder Whoa. and she like cherished cherished it and the f- picture is creepy it, all he did was just like old school Photoshop yeah that's kind of cool though I kind of want to see yeah. that photo yeah Harry Houdini did like did not like what does he what does Job say the how they do dads he didn't like the how they do dads how they do dads <laughs> Anyway, so that's spiritualism. It's sort of okay. in the in the wake of of huge, you know, seventy million plus deaths that had happened yeah. between the flu and World War One. Um, I get so that. Spiritualism offered answers that other religions couldn't. It claimed to have, you know, tangible proof for believers by connecting with spirits of the dead and learning about that there is a world after this one. And you know, frankly, if I was younger, I would have been like, I would have made super fun of these people and just been like, haha, a bunch of idiots. Like, I can't believe that people will believe in anything, but. Having, you know, us all gone through a worldwide pandemic and seen the toll it took yeah. on those who lost somebody, I have to say, like, you know, if we had a world war happening in the middle of it as well, I can't say that I wouldn't be at least curious. However, 
you know, insane yeah. it is, you know, grief. Or at least to, to understand. Of, yeah, understandable. exactly. Yeah. It's like, that makes sense. Yeah, do your thing. Whatever helps you get through this or whatever. Doesn't, as long as it's not hurting anyway. anybody, it's all right. But so that, yeah. that that's sort of in the air at this point. Yeah. It's like spiritualism is okay. in vogue. Also, that's people aren't really drinking, so they can't really like no. let loose. <laughs> so they just, they're yikes. holding a lot in. Yeah, they're holding a lot in. They can't get it out. So Helene might have been trying to tap into something when she came up with this patent. So okay. picture in your mind's eye. If you will, you are a criminal in the 1920s. So first, Kurosh. Oh, yep. okay. What did you get arrested for? In the 1920s, I got arrested for probably just be, being a, a uh, what is it? What's the term? When you, when you're just uh, uh, causing a disturbance in the in the in yeah. the neighborhood, public just, nuisance. Public nuisance. That's what yeah. I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. I was at a loss for the word. I'm like, I just I just be loud and I'm sad and just <laughs> is he a spiritually like. Yeah, I'd be arrested for being insane on the being street. insane yeah. and causing a public ruckus. I mm -hmm. I don't know. My thought was I'm gonna get arrested for eating soft cheese on a Sunday because that's kind of how those like weird laws were back then. Yeah, in certain states. Uh, or like walk, okay. walking a horse through Main Street on yeah, a Tuesday. Yeah, exactly that kind of crap. Some dumbass shit like that. Anyway, so the cops show up and they arrest <laughs> all three of us. They beat us in the head with a baton. They throw us in the back cool. of like their old timey Ford, and they take yeah. us down to the station. And, you know, you're not getting your one phone call or anything. They just take you to be interrogated. And these days, they take you into no, that no, no. order. They oh, would sorry. put me straight in an asylum. So this straight is just into the asylum. Yeah. <laughs> like, lobotomize her. This woman Get was that... trying to vote. We need to take her to prison right away. <laughs> yeah, she warped some pants outside. <laughs> Put her in the put her in the asylum. So yeah, you guys are being taken. Just we're kidding. getting yeah, we're, our bodies are being dumped off the bridge, and they're never gonna find <laughs> us. So nowadays, you get taken into a sterile room behind you know the one way mirror, and they have something on the table to taunt you into confessing your crime. Which in my case would be an empty bin of a bin of uh, you know Valbreso feta or something, and be like, does that look familiar to you? <laughs> You're already <laughs> eating it. Yeah, I'm already You're eating it. Like, I'm like licking the out I've never eaten feta cheese in my life. <laughs> But Helene doesn't want all that. She's not into that. She thinks ahead. She wants to put you in a place which is one of two chambers, the other being occupied by your interrogator. But now okay. we've come to the point where she shows her hand. You ready? Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the, from the patent. <laughs> the primary object of my invention is the provision of an apparatus for the creation of illusory effects calculated to impress the subject with their being of a supernatural character and to so work upon oh. his imagination as to enable an inquisitor operating in conjunction with the recording system to obtain confessions and graphically record them by light action under the control of electric impulses governed by the varying intensities of the sound waves. You guys ready? Yeah, I don't understand no. what, what you said. I didn't think said. you would. That's not the point. And how does she propose by doing this? By having them confess to a ghost skeleton. What? That's so <laughs> metal? Are you kidding? So wow, I just texted okay. you guys the image. Go ahead oh, and look on your phone. That drawing is... <laughs> <laughs> what you could the... Tell <laughs> It, look, that looks like what I look like on a, like, I think I look like that skeleton on a daily basis. The person behind the skeleton is like operating it. That's me. This looks, <laughs> this looks like a postcard from Seattle. It kind of does. <laughs> so uh, why don't you guys explain uh, what you're looking at for the audience at home okay. who's, who's not subscribed to our YouTube channel and watching the full video version, which you should. Hmm. Hannah, do you want to go first? No, no, no. You, you do it. No, you should go first. Come on. No, <laughs> okay. how dare you? Fine, You're in fine. my house. <laughs> <laughs> so on one side, it's it's a figure. Uh, it's a designated, it's kind of like a scientific figure you would see in like an old school, I think like lab report kind of look to mm -hmm. it. Uh, yeah. Like you said, it's, it's a patent. Um, there's on one, on the left side is a gentleman in a nice suit. Looks like from <laughs> uh, the fall collection. Uh, I can't tell yeah. if he's got shoes on, honestly, because one of them. Has a little oh, bit yeah. of a heel. The other one just looks kind of like it's got a toe. He's wearing oh, skeletons, I, I think, at that time. Maybe. That was just, the fashion. That maybe is the criminal, by the way, on the left side. Yes. So, wow. I mean, that's obviously the crime he committed. Well-dressed like, criminal. Oh, you yeah, wore one shoe? Please. One shoe. One... <laughs> <laughs> and then um, in on the uh, other side is, some, is another uh, individual sitting in a chair. Uh, looks like sitting in front of like an uh, x-ray kind of device. <laughs> I don't know. It looks like an X-ray. It looks almost like a a tuba, you know, like the oh, tuba horn. 
going yeah, yeah, into yeah. Oh, yeah. into yeah, yeah. a biology class like skeleton <laughs> body with a movie reel <laughs> sticking out of the back of its head. And that was lit. the best description of an image that this podcast has ever seen. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, ASMR uh, patent uh, descriptions. Usually, Picave's like, "Tell everyone what you're seeing." I'm like, "There's a dude. There's this there's... guy, <laughs> and there's an island. There's some poo on it. Poo on it." <laughs> uh, so she must have been inspired by like the Home Depot or something. Those giant skeletons. So yeah. it's a skeleton, but it's not just any skeleton. This thing is essentially like a Muppet. Being controlled by the interrogator who talks through a megaphone, presumably doing their best haunted skeleton impression. <laughs> and it wow. also has crazy red light bulbs in its eyes. So she she was the Jim Henson of her generation. Yeah. I so get. you basically oh, were like, like, I'm a giant skeleton. <laughs> I know what you ate. You ate f- soft cheese in the street. Did you disturb the peas? Yeah. Like stuff like that. The wonderful Wizard of Oz is here. (laughs) It's basically, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it is. She's like the Wizard of Oz. So you're in there and you see these glowing red eyes and they turn on and then the soft lights come in. And then like all of a sudden you see this demon from the afterlife and it's talking to you and it's trying to, it's like, confess to me, confess. I Um, get that. It was their generation's waterboarding in Guantanamo Bay. Exactly. <laughs> well, if you like think about like how Christian everybody was, it's like yeah. the whole thing about Christianity is like you don't want to go, to, you don't want to die with this on your conscience. You may as well tell this whoever it is, this weird spirit. skeleton person. Yeah, here's another she shot sh- from the front too. By the way, oh, ugh, it yeah, looks like I, TSA. I would, it looks I would, like TSA. <laughs> yeah, it looks like X-ray from TSA. I would confess anything and everything yeah. that needed me to say to get yeah. me out of that room. <laughs> I already want to tell it my secrets. That's true. You could. You just let it know whatever you have. You're like, I play blue-white right. decks. <laughs> it's secretly into, into Azorius. I'm sorry. So it does this whole Fascist. song and dance routine with the red lights and all that's going on. And then you mess up and you're like, oh, my God, no, it was me. I'm sorry. Like, whatever. And you tell them everything and everything that's ever what you've ever done in your entire life. Like, I ate the cheese. <laughs> yeah. Or like Chunk in the Goonies, where he's just like, oh. <laughs> this one time, <laughs> where he's like crying, and they're like, ah, I like this kid. Um, and the oh. cops are all high fiving. They're like, we did it. We got like the entire confession, but that's not enough. Helene took it, took it a step further. Of course, as you pointed out, she includes a camera right behind the skeleton's head. That way, they could film the confession in all its God fearing glory, and present that at trial. <laughs> do we have, do we have recordings of this still? It never got made. No. Oh, but it was what? a patent that was filed. No. <laughs> but no. Because, like... So I'll, I'll say this. So basically it's coercion. You can't scare the shit out of somebody no. into thinking <laughs> there's like a demon from hell and then just be like, that's going to hold up in a court of law. In the 1920s? Even in the 1920s, you kind of couldn't do that, surprisingly, despite it being very lax. I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about that. I was like, yeah, we're going to trick them into thinking they're dying, right? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, basically. (laughs) Uh, And also, who knows what the hell people are going to say to like a demon from the other side. You're just going to be like, oh, yeah, no, whatever. Somebody might try and make a deal with them and be like, yeah, I'd love to learn how to play guitar much better. Can I sell you my Mm -hmm. soul? Like, it was just too unpredictable. Yeah, in the wrong hands, it could have gone evil. We don't want that to happen in law enforcement. Yeah. New technology no. to go put in the wrong hands and turn yeah. evil. And turn evil. Never. We don't want that at all. Anyway, so basically they were like, yeah, no, that's 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 not going to work out. We're not they wouldn't let her do it. That oh. wasn't a thing. No one was interested in it. But oh, it's a pretty cool little interesting. But it's interesting... in the patent library. It's, it's there. It's in the patent library. Exists. It's there. Uh, there is a YouTube video. I forget who it is. It was like a. Uh, curiosity stream video or something where somebody oh, yeah. like recreate it and made it and then like they have like a little video where they showed people to see how it works but uh, it's a pretty cool concept I thought it was pretty awesome and it basically just looks like they take you to a haunted house yeah I was about to say in the, in the theme that you were saying with the Halloween this just sounds like a perfect Halloween decoration you have at your front door yeah like trick or treat kids don't you know take your kid your parent drink your old teen yeah, <laughs> Oval team. What's that? Well, okay, so that that is insane. I want to make this. Yeah, yeah. it'll be fun to make it. Um, but that requires yeah. uh, technical skills that we know. Although, Koros, well, you are you, your degrees in engineering, right? Wait, I mean, really? I am Persian. Yeah, <laughs> I am also know Persian. Means. I do not have a degree in engineering. Wait, is Kaveh the outlier? Oh, very much so. <laughs> really? 
Mm-hmm. He's an Not engineer really. of de- he's an engineer of other kinds. He's an engineer of destruction, of comedy, yeah. of <laughs> social engineer. Yeah. yeah, engineering of my own demise more than yeah. anything. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, anyway, we, can, we can see. We can make something. We can probably we put can make together. it. All right. If we get, if we get, we got a lot of stuff to do, Kurosh. I feel like you came on this episode and we just ended up creating. more I'm sorry. Work for I just gave you guys more work. You guys are like, no, oh, we're, we're so gonna busy. Give you work. I'm yeah. so- <laughs> <laughs> Delegation. We're busy. We're busy yeah. because we make ourselves that way. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. at your next panel. You might see one of these. Yes. If there, yeah. Awesome. If there's an opportunity, when's your? There is a panel coming up. Is- uh, his, at his, the time, yeah, at, LA. at the time that this airs, I will have done LA Comic Con, I believe. It will have been the previous weekend. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so I can't really plug it on this one. Anyway, that's my tab. Uh, I just thought it was cool. I like the drawings. I like the idea, and I liked learning a little bit about spiritualism in the context of it after World War One and uh, yeah. the Spanish uh, flu. So you set the tone. Like I was in the vibe of like I would feel how it, you know I was immersed in that. Like as a director sets a sets a scene. <laughs> For, for the he's actor. good at that. <laughs> I, I felt like Daniel Day Lewis just like method acting into the kid to the spot, or, or like a Jared Leto. One. Yeah, you're in the 1700s. There is a garden, and you're walking through it, and there is a homeless man who's being paid <laughs> to not talk to you. Okay, to do my next. Do my next. Yeah. <laughs> there are magic next cards. Next thing you know, yeah. they're all playing magic, and it you're, smells bad. They're feeding you and feeding you and feeding you. <laughs> And you're begging them to stop, begging but they're saying, no, oh, please, please, no, please, you're, yeah, but you're you in can't, my hermit cave. Because it's rude, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going to keep feeding you. And it's rude to refuse, so you keep having to eat because you don't want to offend your hosts anyway. You don't want to uh, offend the hermit. Well, yeah. Exactly. That's my tab. That was, that was cool. awesome, dude. That Thank was you. crazy. That was cool. I like them. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, <laughs> That's, that was the, would have been a good Halloween one if she had actually made it. A little bit of Halloween. I honestly anyway. feel like both were the, the, the ornamental... Uh, <laughs> People. Aspect, you know, the people. There's, there's a morbidness to it. There's a little bit morbidity with us. I just realized, <laughs> um, you know, the one one human tokens. Yeah. No. Uh, who, who does those? Is could that be a hermits. magic thing. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> those could be it ornamental is. hermits. Yeah. The oh, one okay. one ter- humans. They're always like running through a village with a sword, but this time it could just be a hermit looking like insane. We could Sweet. get this patent into a token as well. I think <gasps> we could. Yeah. We could get it into like a yeah. It's confessing, getting curse, the confession a part of card. part of magic. No. Uh, there's clues. No, there are clue tokens. There is. I hate the clue thing. I get maybe oh, like well, clues a placeholder. I, I haven't done much with the clues, Listen, but clues we're gonna workshop be this. We yeah, got a Mustafiar one, like you said. I'm gonna do a Mustafa Musi, or we're gonna do this as well. He he'd be good with a werewolf deck. Werewolf deck for this guy. Yeah, I can see that for me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know what that means, but sure. Peter Stump, love yeah. it. Thumbs up. Yeah, we can't talk about magic anymore. Um, um, so what? Yeah, so that brings us to the time where we're going to close our tabs. Kurosh, do you have any suggestions for cool sounds that we can use to close? Maybe something that's related to Magic the Gathering or one of your decks or tokens or whatever. Uh, or a bowl you're just throwing of words out yeah, that you remember. A bowl of yogurt getting flipped <laughs> over on the table and f- spilling everywhere. I don't know. As long uh, as it a destroys cool sound the tab. would I would say would be the like a deck shuffling. If not, oh. if if that isn't doesn't work, then I would say like a Persian like a bah 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 uh-huh. bah of a destruction. Ooh, is... We're gonna close them though. It needs to like die. We I could just bah, take bah. your bah bah bah. Just yeah, okay, we're gonna like give bah, you a bah, clean. Bah, bah. Okay, just okay. do a clean bah bah bah, and then and then uh, Alyssa can take that, and then just maybe put some echoes behind it, so it sounds okay. very like epic. <laughs> okay. Put the the desert music in there too. I'm just, I'm just ba, ba, ba. <laughs> I thought I thought you wanted me to do the desert. I didn't realize Colin was doing no. it. Too. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. No, it's perfect. Let's as start it is. again. Let's, Let's start again. Your, oh, no, okay. no, that's it. That's what we're gonna have to do. Let's <laughs> no, do it. We're gonna have to have a be chaos. Pull up your tabs. You ready, guys? Yeah. Kurush, okay. count us down. Three, two, one. Ba 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 ba. ba. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be you saying that over you saying that. that. I love that. that, 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 that yeah. uh, you that, wanted that, the echo that, in that. of itself. That, 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 that. <laughs> okay, moving on to to listener emails. Uh, I believe Hannah, you're you're gonna be up first because yeah. you did your tab first. So go for it. This is uh, from Julia from the Netherlands, but originally from Poland. So all right, Julia says, uh, "Dear 500 Open Tabs, thank you for making my wait every week." For a new thing, I get to info dump on my boyfriend. Oh, thank you, thank you for letting me wait for a week for a new thing to. I get to info dump on my boyfriend. I'm sorry, uh. Julia's boyfriend. 
<laughs> uh, but look, he signed up for this. I love it, and he loves me, so he doesn't get much of a say. <laughs> Thankfully, we both have ADHD, so he never leaves me with a fun fact of his own. And the Fair one I have minute. to share is from him. So I think she meant he it always leaves, leaves me, me without. without a fact, a fun fact of his own. So this is from from his tab. So I would okay. like to present to you a Wikipedia page of one Leo Major, uh, a Quebecois soldier and an absolute one-eyed human or one-eyed madman. Oh. He was a Second World War soldier who participated in the liberation of the Netherlands from the Nazi occupation. He fought in the war since 1940 and had lost his eye in combat, but continued to fight, insisting that he only needs one eye to use a gun. He then continued to fight in the Korean War in the 50s. So, however, he is particularly commemorated in the city of Zvola. Zvole? Zvole. Zvole. Uh, fun fact, when I started this email, I just passed that city on a train ride home, which has he has single-handedly liberated from the Nazis in 1945. The story goes that Canadian Whoa. the Canadian army was ready to bomb the city where, where 500 Nazi troops were stationed. He and his buddy, Wilfred Arsenault, and volunteered for a scouting mission. So they didn't want to destroy the city, so they agreed to liberate the city before that happens. However, on their way to Zvola, Arsenault was killed. Oh, no. A normal person would go back to the commanders and leave it at that, not Leo. He killed two soldiers of the group that shot Arsenault and then continued on his way to the city alone. Nice. It's not clear what if, what had happened, to, but suffice to say that Leo spent several hours in Zvola where he somehow forced 500 Germans to leave the city, after which he contacted Dutch resistance and returned his commanders with Arsenault's body. Wild. Stories of what he was up to are many and somewhat contradictory. Most popular say that the Major, armed with several machine guns and a sack of grenades, launched a solo assault on Zvola using gunfire and grenade explosions to trick the German elements in in the city into believing a large Canadian force was assaulting the city. Whoa. Thanks to his bravery, or insanity, the city of Zvola got spared the shelling and got liberated without firing a single shot, at least from anyone beside the Major. Wow. There you go. You can consider this my boyfriend's payback from all the times I've info dumped on him. Thanks to you. All the best from the Netherlands, Julia. That's he wild. Like he would have loved uh, Helga. Was Helga his name? He would have loved Helga, Helga Munger. Yeah, dude, this guy sounds insane. Action hero. Yeah. Also, I yeah. like that it's 500, although I don't like that it's 500 Nazi soldiers because that's like, no, that's fun. But okay, uh, we always think of 500. Unless whatever. we say 500 open Nazi soldiers, meaning they've been cut open. Their bodies so. have Their tabs up. got closed. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. We closed all 500 of those Nazis. The Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, adaptation of this. He's like, you're considered your tab closed. Speaking of commando, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The only good Nazis are dead Nazis. That's good. I like that. (laughs) Um, That's pretty good, Arnold. I love it. Okay. Email number two is from Betsy from San Francisco. Hi, Cobb and Hannah. I'm writing from San Francisco. Parentheses. Bay Area represent. Woo. I'm constantly driving by Lick Wilmerding High School and wondered about the namesake, <laughs> as I am, as I read the name <laughs> Lick Wilmerding. Lick Wilmerding. I think yeah. he lives on Dick Hill. Dick Hill, exactly. He's rolling down that hill, uh, which introduced me to the wildlife of James Lick. I highly recommend oh. reading through his whole Wikipedia page, but some <laughs> highlights of James Lick. Oh, Jimmy my Lick. Na- oh, my, Jim- dang it. I was going to say, my name's Jimmy Lick. <laughs> my friends call me Jimmy Lick. Jimmy, yeah. <laughs> Old Jimmy Lick moved to Buenos Aires to be a piano maker, but left because of his ignorance of Spanish and the turbulent <laughs> political situation. Okay. Old Jimmy Lick moved <laughs> no, to no, San Francisco. No, you, you can't do the whole thing. You can't do this whole thing. You can't tell me what not to do. I'm going to just do it more. Uh, Old Jimmy Lick moved to San Francisco and brought 600 pounds of chocolate that sold quickly. So he convinced his friend Domingo Ghirardelli to move to SF. Yes. What? Dude, I've read about this dude before because the Ghirardellis did not live here until this guy was like, by the way, there's chocolate here. Old Jimmy Lick brought him. Old Jimmy Lick bought land during the gold rush and became the richest man in California. At the end of old <laughs> Jimmy Lick's life, he wanted to <laughs> he wanted to build giant statues of himself and his parents and erect a lo- <laughs> pyramid larger than the py- Great Pyramid of Giza in his own honor in downtown San Francisco, but was convinced to donate the money to better causes. <laughs> yeah. If only some of our tech overlords in San Francisco would follow suit. Yeah. Old Jimmy Lick's fortune was used to build the Lick Observatory. <laughs> conservatory. Uh. Of flowers and many other he, statues and memorials in the Bay Area. He built the Conservatory of Flowers? That place Apparently. is dope. There's flowers in there. 
He uh, licked that so place. This, he licked there's it. There's a corpse. There's a corpse flower that blooms, and it smells like a dead oh, corpse. Oh, can you lick it when it smells bad? If no one's looking, I'm sure it's you can. Interactive. Uh, sorry for how long it was, <laughs> but his life was insane, and I can't believe it took me seeing a high school to know who he was. Thanks for podcasting, and looking forward to new episodes, Betsy. I'm actively uh-huh. opening the Wikipedia for James Lick right now. Thanks, Ooh, Betsy. James Lick. Thank you, Betsy. Wow, Betsy. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you, Julia. Thank you for your emails. If you too, listener, have uh, an email that you'd like to share with us, please go ahead and send it to 500opentabs at gmail.com. That's 500. Give us a brief, can't emphasize this enough, brief explanation of what your tab is. Um, Include the link. And of course, let us know where you're from because that gets us very excited. And uh, I believe that's it. (laughs) We get so excited knowing where people are. Um, Why is that? Why do we care? I don't know, because it's exciting to know that it's yeah, not it just like exciting. five people that we know that listen to this that are like our friends, <laughs> not even in my family. Anyway, uh, we'd like to take this time to thank Kurush for coming on the show. It was fantastic to have you. Thank, thank, you. thank you for taking the time to do some research and teach us about, or I guess not teach Hannah, but teach me about <laughs> Magic the Gathering, because Hannah already knew a lot about it. But um, it was a yeah. lot of fun to have you. Uh, why don't you tell our audience about where they can find you, if there's anything you'd like to plug, anything you'd like people to know about you that's coming up. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. It's been a pleasure. I've, I've been a big fan of the show and it just been on, it's been an honor to be on the show. Um, you can find me at Cujo Prime on Thanks. all like the social things. Um, and you've, my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash at Cujo Prime. Uh, I have a sh- show about indie video games, celebrating and elevating indie games and game developers. Cool. Um, I have a backlog of work. I've been kind of in convention mode over the summer and I'm trying to get back to it. So there's a f- lot of things I, like I have that I'm editing right now, but so they should look forward to a lot of really cool, different, unique indie games that I'm going to be discussing and showcasing there. Can you give any like hint as to maybe one of them that you're going to talk about? Um, I would say, uh, I'll give to one that is more of a well-known one. There's a game called, uh, Bellatro. They took... Okay. The card game of poker and made it more magic esque, um, oh. in a fun okay. way. It's very addicting. My cool. my girlfriend has never played it, and she knows poker, but she's never like played these card games. And she's like, "I have to get the holographic of of the Joker of the of the black <laughs> of the Jack of Spades. I have to." And like, it's turned I'm her like, into you. You will make fun of my magic all the time. I can make fun of you. Now. Um, this so is just that. magic. And then an- another game will be uh, about a parkour cat. That uh, yes. runs and delivers pizza. Uh, Dude, I, that's yeah. fun. I'm not going to say. I mean, I'm really looking forward to seeing that one. That sounds yeah, amazing. That sounds awesome. So I'm excited to talk about those and to share that. So those are there. Please and then, check those out. Yeah. And I write for uh, Temple of Geek. So I, my latest stuff was uh, regarding Marvel vs. Capcom 2. It's a fighting game uh, collection mm-hmm. uh, from all the Marvel vs. Capcom stuff I grew up with. And I was more than excited to talk about it. So, that's thank you. awesome. Yeah, you do streams you. and stuff too, right? I yeah, do, do it sometimes. I, I haven't done as much. I, I did it primarily with the Prince of Persia stuff, which, by the way, I've been revisiting, and uh, there's reasons to revisit that. The not the one we we I showed you, but there's a Prince we of Persia game. We played the game. PC one, I think. Yeah, then there's we the played, Switch version. Well, no, there's oh, the ones it, that came out this year. Sorry. Yeah, there was one called The Lost Crown, and that's come out this year. And I have nothing. Go- I'm working on a more just. I want to do a Persian video all about that. Like nice at some point, so I'm excited. I look forward to that too. It's fantastic. That's that's a big deal. Awesome, awesome. And uh, you can follow us at 500 Open Tabs at in, on Instagram with the number 500 500 Open Tabs, and you can, as you said, you can write in at 500 Open Tabs at gmail dot com. And I'm gonna do the book tour stuff really quick. Portland on the 26th. I'm gonna be at Powell's. Don't know what time. And uh, New York Comic Con. I'm going backwards. New York Comic Con. I'm doing a signing on Friday of the New York Comic Con at one o'clock, and then. What's next? Pasadena on the 29th. Uh, oh, right. And I'll be yeah, in yeah. conversation with Sarah Anderson from Sarah Scribbles. And uh, then Salt Lake on the 1st of November uh, at the King's English. Where the Elder Highlander um, dragons are. Yep. I will be sitting down with Elder Hi- Highlander dragon, Dragon Highlander. And we will be talking about my book. Yes. Which Elder Highlander dragon is just going to be a giant dragon wearing a uh, short sleeve white um, shirt with uh, a black tie and then a name <laughs> tag. Should be with a cardigan. With the name, like, with the name tag. <laughs> yeah, it's Elder like, huh. Elder dragon. Elder Highlander. Yep, um, holding a book, yeah. Uh, next Where can week, they find you? Uh, oh, right. Um, I will also be at New York Comic Con uh, next week. That's going to be exciting. What's our booth? I don't know. <laughs> K? No, oh, it's K. Remember it's K. your name. Right. It's K something. 
K something. Come see me. I'll have a bunch of stuff. You can find me on Instagram at permafriends. And of course, um, sometimes not really on Twitter, but still sort of there. And occasionally on Blue Sky. Uh, of course, join our Discord. That's where we have a lot of mm-hmm. cool conversations. I think we're going to definitely be getting into some of this magic stuff once this episode drops. Um, yeah. And of course, follow the sponsor links. If you were recommended this show by a friend, please continue the thread and recommend it mm-hmm. to another friend. Help us grow. Just like Elder Dragon Highlander. Exactly. Please pro- 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 pros- proselytize this. Proselytize bring it, it to the masses. It. Yeah. Got, Persop- bring Persepolize. This- Persepolize it. If you like magic and you know, or you have a friend that likes magic or a spouse that likes magic, tell them about this podcast. Send them this episode. If you know a skeleton, send it to them. Or the kid you bullied in high school. If you have a new ornamented, uh, a decorated, ornamented ornamented permit. If you you know any words, walk into the cave. (laughs) Get them a phone, play them this podcast or a laptop. Yeah. Yeah, spread spread the word, you guys. Uh, Again, Kurosh, thank you so much. Fantastic to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And what did you say at the end of the other episode? Oh, um, I'll see you at the uh, shit wall. See, I'll see you. I'll see you at the shit wall. <laughs> Look, it's a bad sign off. <laughs> ba right? ba ba. But it's all we have. <laughs> ba ba ba. Segundus next in chat here. Five times. Oh, Jimmy Lick. <laughs> There was not even that many Jimmy Licks. You should. You just kept saying that. It wasn't even written. You just kept saying Jimmy Lick. Anyway. Anyway. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Peace. 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 Peace.